Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for the Wrestling Compadres with your hosts, Dale Rutledge, Scott Narva, Jay Washington and Jake Lloyd. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Wrestling Compadres right here on Dragon Wagon Radio. I want to take a brief moment before we start and thank the talented, wonderful, very attractive Chris Hemsworth for doing that new intro for this show. I think that was a beautiful Australian accent. He really nailed it and gave it a little something special. I really love that. I am Dale Rutledge. I'm Scott Narver. I'm Sleepy. I'm Jay Washington. (laughs) And this is Jake. <laughs> oh, just Jake. Great. Just Everybody Jake. else is well, just Jake. I mean, obviously, Hemsworth already said our, our full name, so I, you know, I thought it was redundant. <laughs> True. <laughs> if we didn't do redundancy, we wouldn't do this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, new show name? Is that what we're going to do? Wrestling oh, Redundancy? <laughs> yeah, that's a good name. Wrestling Redundancy? It's got the good alliteration. I like that. Sure. Well, speaking of redundancies, I think we should uh, get to the news. Well, just uh, last week, as we had said that Angelico had signed with AEW, then right after that, Jack Evans signed as well. Nice. Remind uh, me, Jack Evans, who that person is? Are you referring to me as Jack Evans to remind who he is? (laughs) Yes, that that was the sentence I said. (laughs) It pretty much is. Uh, Jack Evans has been on Lucha Underground, I think ROH as well. Um, Is, Is that been the name he's been going under? Yeah. For a long time. He's been on the indies he forever. He's really good. For some reason, I can't place the Still face. A lot of wrestling in Mexico as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of looks kind of like a, a surfer white guy. Uh, he's got the okay. long board shorts, but he's not a surfer type. Right. But uh, like uh, like a riddle a little bit? I guess a little bit, yeah. Okay. Kind of a bro? Uh, Skinny, skinnier than that and more, more weed smoker than... Well, no, I guess that guy is a weed smoker. But they both seem like weed smokers. <laughs> he's not very duty and bro y. Yeah. Yeah, he's not duty. <laughs> you guys said duty twice. But he's good. I, I really dug him. Nice. Um, and I'm glad he's getting a bigger opportunity and a big old paycheck. Sweet. And he's not uh, signed to Lucha Underground forever. <laughs> <laughs> signed forever. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, shit. this is the same Jack. I thought it was a different Jack Evans. I, I was looking him up while you guys were talking. It's the same Jack Evans I know from when I was on the Indies. Okay. It, it's a good deal for him to be signed to. You should it. text him already. Then I don't have his number. I, we haven't talked in years. But uh, it's a, he's a good, like you said, with and and Angelico and him. These are good additions to what they're establishing and what they're trying to do with AEW. Again, being that alternative to what's out already. All flips, no fists. Man, <laughs> minus the shirts, <laughs> minus the shirts. You know what I'm saying? So it's a good thing. I mean, we'll we'll start hearing more and more uh, roster signings again between what they've got already for the guys. A stacked women's roster. AEW is setting themselves up in a good position. Yeah, it's pretty good. They get a loaded card up as well for uh, for double or nothing, which I'm sure we'll be chatting about at some point. For all or nothing. Oh, boy. You can't get I it. thought it was cool. I don't know if you uh, guys paid attention to the upfronts much, but they did mention on there that the uh, AEW promotion was going to be doing like stats, like sport stats oh, uh, for nice. all their guys, which I think is a really, really great idea and a, a cool addition that nobody is really wasn't wasn't maybe a lot of times because they want you to forget <laughs> but nobody's really unless they you know you're the guy that lost 200 times we don't really know that kind of stuff so i think that's a great didn't new thing tna to do that for a little of. while didn't they have like an actual legitimate like stat and ranking system like wins and losses they did yes it was very short-lived was it okay I, I someone was, was probably back there with a bunch of I missed it. legal pads and, and pens and like oh i can't i can't keep track of all this shit <laughs> Who, who got disqualified? Is he still with the damn company? Yeah. I, you know what? I think it's good, though. They're taking bits and pieces from different companies as well as having their own flair and bringing it together to make one unique and interesting it's product. That's not true. They don't have a flair. Well, WWE has all the flares. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> David! <laughs> David, get to AEW fast! Jesus. You have an unhealthy obsession with David, by the way. A very unhealthy. But yeah, it, it, I think any obsession with David Flair is <laughs> unhealthy. unhealthy. But yeah, it's nice to see what, what, they're, what they're doing, though. <laughs> uh, even at the upfronts, not trying to be competition. Just, hey, we're an alternative. And again, you get this talent that's been needing this break, that's been needing this chance to shine on a platform like this on television regularly. And AEW is allowing that now. 
is opening that door. I I would disagree with the competition bit. They they uh the the guy what what's his name Tony Khan yeah is that Genghis he was Khan. he was, he had some pretty yes Genghis Khan Chow, Chow Khan for sure. Um, all right, we get it. The con name. So I think that con he had some pretty spicy words, um, for, you know, like this is what wrestling fans have deserved for a while and weren't getting the quality. Like they, he definitely was, was taking some open digs at the uh, In, front. Inversely though, I also saw an interview where he was just praising Vince McMahon. He was like, yeah, I want to do what they're doing. That's so incredible. This guy is fantastic. Which and seems that's competitive. Yeah. That's fair. I want to do what they're doing. Sure. And let's get into it. I mean, it's announced that they will be airing on TNT in the fall. Holy shit. Ted Turner bought TNT back. That's right. <gasps> His name is Tony Khan now. Oh, shit. Hey, it was him all along. <laughs> we need they. We all kept saying they needed it. Was the, it was the long con. That's what they called it. Bah. Bah. Ah. Do we have the rim shot effect? Because it went around with all three. Of no, we got, rid, we got rid of Johnny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were talking about how AEW needed a good TV deal. You know, we knew they were going. We, they needed something solid that would put them in good, you know, in good yeah. standing with everything. And they went and got a TV deal. They got a good one. I mean, no, uh. they, just saying they got a good one out of TNT. You they don't think so? I mean, you don't think the right is TNT think? on on every like yes. cord yeah. cutters? Really? TNT yeah. is a basic oh. channel. TNT oh, is also on a, the majority of, if not all, the uh, like you know like cable, Hulu, satellite, everything, oh, like okay. all those streaming well, packages. Like <gasps> TNT is so major. That's fantastic. If I could watch AW on Hulu, I'll be thoroughly excited. YouTube TV, like it's on all those. It's so. gonna be annoying having to figure out what they cut from it every week, but still, it'll be enjoyable. <laughs> but see, that may be. Now, see, that may be a thing where I don't think they may cut as much, knowing that the w- knowing that the WWE does a hellified edit when it comes to Monday Night Raw. You well, know? That, just, that's just a time constraint thing. Yeah, they, they, yeah they, I, they I don't think want, they, they, don't they want probably won't be a three hour show. No, yeah, yeah, but I said they yeah. won't be a three hour show. Yeah, they don't cut SmackDown or any no. of the other programs. No, so. not at all. Yeah. But, and I think it's meant to be a uh, look, here's a here's a version of it for the rest of it. Go to our YouTube or sign up for cable to to give yeah, it that money directly. Yeah, but the issue with is like yeah. sometimes you don't know what the rest of it is. Like how many weeks have we been on sure here? You do. With, it's very it's no, no, very no. simple. I'm, he makes it way way complicated. Okay. All you have to do is go to any recap report and or look at their YouTube page that's, and go, I didn't see that with the red letters. Okay, that's I got one, you. But that's still one more step than a person just watching a TV show though. Sure, but you know that it's a three-hour show, and if you want to see the rest, yeah, but that's it's what like, you do. But how do you figure out, like, okay, yeah, I get what you're saying, like, oh, I didn't see this. But sometimes there's still things you still won't see besides just matches, segments, and stuff like that. It, it, I think what it's, it's tougher because sometimes what's cut is just, like, entrances. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. not always, like, entire segments. Like, oh, we cut literally every entrance out of this episode for some reason for time. Well, Hans City also, yeah. a recap would let you sure. know, like, oh, there was nothing else that I missed in between this and this. Gotcha, like, gotcha. it's still the same. They don't jumble time frames in it. They don't do the right. main event at the beginning to go, like, well, well this will save time here and all that. So I got you. Same thing. But yeah. they're on TNT. That's pretty damn huge. And uh, with that also, it was announced that Bleacher Report will stream, will be the digital streamer for Double or Nothing. So okay. we talked about, I think it was last week, ITV is handling their they are their UK, UK feed, excuse me. And now Bleacher Report will be handling the Amer- domestic feed. So they are covered on all bases right now, which is a good thing for AEW. Get ready to launch and come out the gate you know swinging so everybody's going to bleacher reports website and watching it i believe so uh i think if you're gonna i think you're gonna buy it from bleacher report or something i think the pay-per-view some it's some way through bleacher report with their digital streaming i have to read more up on that but that's how that's gonna work good thing i'm going so i don't have to deal with whatever you don't worry about it are you gonna go beyond tnt hey they know drama (gasps) oh characters welcome no that's usa get away tnt very funny is that what? It, no, that's TBS. That. TBS is very funny. Yes, I know it was a bit. Thank you. Um, do you want to know what wasn't? I a think bit? it has to be funny to be a bit. I uh, giggity that. goose. You know what wasn't funny? Lars Sullivan's uh, actions on a weightlifting uh, forum quite a few years ago. I bet he thought it was hilarious. Oh, he thought he was full of chuckles and everything, and they literally fined him a hundred thousand dollars for yeah. all of his uh, statements. So, uh, for those who might not be aware. Um, Sam Lars Sullivan. You know, I was actually I had a website. Just put up. quotes around what you're saying right now. I lost it. So, oh, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Damn it! I had a page pulled up and it's gone. Anyways, 
um, some very uh, non PC and uh, non non performance center, non performance center. Yeah, some, some very racist bullshit. Lars Sullivan said, yeah, and was going through with it and meant it all. R- racism, anti Semitic, uh, sexist, just the, the awful, awful things. Uh, that one could say, and apparently some, you know, redditor or somebody like unearthed these comments from some weightlifting forum, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they tweeted at Big E, and Big E wrote like, "Yeah, I'm aware. A lot of people are aware, and now he has to be aware that he's in a locker room with a bunch of people who, like, you know, are a very diverse locker room who know his, you know, fucking past or his thoughts or whatever like that." Mm-hmm. Um, WWE put out an official statement saying that his words do not. Of course they did. Match their opinions and their stuff, and they he's find an independent them. contractor. Yeah, of they, course. Well, I don't think that was mentioned at all. No, I'm just, just saying, I'm just like, saying that he is. You know, that's a part of the thing. Well, but I mean, I, I also don't think they do a word association when they hire someone right. and go like, "You nailed it!" <laughs> right, right. When we said lazy, you said an interesting word, and we went, "Yeah, <laughs> we agree." Oh, jeez. But hundred thousand, which probably is not a. Uh, not a small amount for that man right now. They said yeah. the hundred thousand is the total of his entire NXT run. How much he made is an entire NXT wow. run. Pre tax or post tax? Probably pre tax. Gross or net? Mm. Gross. And so they said well, they don't. What he said was very gross. It was very gross. There's no telling how the, he's going to have to pay it back as of now. They don't know if they're going to take it out of increments in his current paychecks or whatnot. But the main reason the WWE did it was because of the advertisers that started bringing it up, like. The advertiser was coming to him like, you need to do something about this. And the WWE at the same time didn't want to release him. So they were like, well, damn, we'll just publicly announce we are finding him and we will make sure that people know it's not just us saying something. I find it odd that he's not suspended. I do, too. Uh, I do, too. I definitely do, I found, too. I found the official um, words from them. Uh, after the generic, like, we are an uh, inclusive company and... Um, we embrace all individuals, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, uh, Dylan Miley is his real name. What a name. Uh, A.K.A. <laughs> Lars Sullivan will be fined 100000 and required to complete sensitivity training for offensive commentary uncovered from his past. D- Dale, so, is that a wing in the Performance Center? Do they have that there? <laughs> sensitivity training. I'm sure it is. Uh, WWE it's will, right behind the improv classes. Oh, uh, my God. I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that. Uh, we will also facilitate meetings for Dylan with community organizations to fo- foster further discussion around the power of social media and the impact of your words. It might be fueling his hatred. Um, of just people in general, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it, it's, uh, yeah. It, uh, putting so somebody it, in a class like that is not going to help, you know. Uh, I wonder what it meant. Um that biggie knew already so is, did he come in there with a reputation it, for being something or, or is he from like or arkansas maybe people, or, something? or maybe just or like people what? have have like already s- sent them this shit you yeah, know what i mean like people are probably just like it, just because some brilliant dude on reddit decided to compile literally every single comment doesn't mean that people haven't probably known this was a thing in the past it's just now it's in the mainstream now we've we become aware of it right And Titus O'Neil actually tweeted about and said he appreciates Lars coming up to them to apologize directly to try to understand better. Oh, so that was a thing that happened? Yeah, that was an actual thing that happened. And so it's been happening recently. You know, let's go back to Hulk Hogan when he came back. Let's not go back to Hulk Hogan. Well, no, no, no. You you have to in a sense because, (laughs) you know, Hogan went and talked to all the, you know, the black guys in the locker room to Mm -hmm. apologize to them directly. And so because Titus was one of the first ones was like, I don't want to talk to him. You know, so Hogan's done it. Sullivan's done it. I think the problem becomes, yeah, we'll say that person isn't the same nine years ago, which is, you know, it's a fair assessment. But if you don't say anything about it and you wait till it's quote unquote unearthed and now all of a sudden you have to play remorseful, you knew what you said. You stood by what you said. You could have brought that up beforehand and say, hey. Back in the day, I made some statements before this comes out. Right. And everybody makes a big deal. But now you're trying to play that PR jump in front of it. When you should have jumped or, in front or, of it. Or behind it, you mean. Jump behind it, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Jump behind it when you should have jumped in front of it a while ago. Or he may never think of it. <laughs> yeah, I think he would have to be pretty focused. If he said it that long ago, I mean, that's like saying, I don't know. Like for me, someone would have to be like, yo, I used to hate gay people. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> right. Cool now. Right. <laughs> but the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that anyone would do that because then that that does show that they are still focused on it. But right. I, I don't know. I, I feel like people can change. It just has to come from themselves. It can't right. be something that sensitivity classes 
aren't going to matter unless you're in there and you're earnest and you really want to find out what the right thing is right. to do. And not also, nothing. losing a hundred thousand dollars may change uh, the way you look. Especially when you're absolutely. not making no real money anyway. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred thousand dollars is real money. No, no, I'm saying like <laughs> Lars isn't one of those talents who's making this two fifty, three hundred thousand plus bonuses sure, money not at all. So a hundred thousand for him is a major hit. And and I just. Like you said, sensitivity training without it being in earnest is one thing. I just hate that we're in this day and age where no matter who it is, if they say something absurd, they say something racist or sexist, homophobic, and, and others, we have to all of a sudden wait on these bullshit PR moves and apologies. It was like, oh, that's not how I feel now. Well, what else would it be? Yeah. I mean, well, I only reason I do, say do, that. Do you want like a day of everybody announcing everything awful they've ever said, like a holiday once a year? Well, if you know you've said certain, not everybody, but I think in certain situations where we are with these WWE superstars, for instance, mm-hmm. people are going to research you no matter what, especially if you have those that one or two fans who just don't like you and all they're they're. They're just dedicated to searching the Internet for anything they can on you to take you down. Mm-hmm. That's how we're we're in this society now. Yeah, just and so, the, uh, this is basically the James Gunn I was situation. Just about to say, yes, that. absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's a hundred percent that same thing. And I I was basically what you're saying is what I said about him. Scott and I had a debate about this ourselves. Really, of you know, he knew it was there. If it was somebody that that has a, a high profile like that, then yeah, you should probably check your Twitter out. Well, actually, real quick with with Gunn, he had actually addressed it when he first got hired for uh, Guardians One. It was just he never deleted the tweets. Like Disney and them all brought it up before. Whereas with Lars wow. Sullivan, when he was in NXT, I don't think anybody really truly brought this up. It was only until the he's coming to the main roster. Also, also a a forum for some subculture isn't necessarily as like public and well, I'm gonna say permanent, even though obviously it is as like a Twitter account though and. Uh, I don't, I mean, fuck, I've been on forums for years. I'm sure that there's some shit back there that I've said that I don't remember saying. Not that it was a racist shit or insensitive or sexual shit, but like, I don't remember the conversations that I had mm. on a forum from, you know, 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, it wouldn't be that important. Yeah, to when, you. Dale, when Dale was firing up his, uh, his uh, BBS um, that we talked about on the pre show, <laughs> you know, back in his early computing days, I'm sure he doesn't remember conversations he had with a bunch of strangers. So I think it's different. Like Twitter is like, here's a thing that I'm putting out of myself, you know, that's very individual. I still I would, have also, one to- say, I would also say this, and this is not to defend or uh, be positive in any way, mm. but I would think it's uh, really difficult that if you're hired by a major company, you're, you're, a, you achieve the job that you wanted to get mm. and you know, you have some skeletons in the closet. If you go and you say that, who do you say it to? Are they going to be okay with it? Especially in a show sport that is not cool with vulnerability and issues. Well, and, when everything is always like the rumor is like, oh, they got heat. Right. Oh, yeah. so he's got heat for doing this. Or he told the wrong person. It's like the person he has to tell is a black guy. Like, what does he do? Does he go no, and I say it? It. Like, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a shitty system i guess like for mm-hmm. the person right. who's done it and then also like how do you go about well reporting on i yourself? think they have a an, an ethics department it's standards and practice something like that and the only reason i know of that because of an episode of total divas and i bring that up of the episode when lana and rusev took those quote-unquote nude pictures on the beach mm-hmm. when they just had on the nude underwear and the guy who was responsible who's the head of that department called them in the office and he said to them, you guys should have told us at first before this came out. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was basically saying, let's get in front of this so we can already be prepared to handle it when it comes out. The PG okay. police. Yeah, we can already be able to have everything in stand- on standby, right. have our crisis people already in line and everything. Hmm. So I think that was, you know, that's some, but that's a, that's a whole, I mean, that's all a big story. But again, let's, it's seeing how it plays forward, how it plays out going forward. And I still want to say this one thing. Uh, Dale's gay. I just thought he was fabulous. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. See, Dale caught on. Thank you. <laughs> Do you? I, I caught I, on. You were asleep during the whole beginning <laughs> yeah. of the pre-show. Yeah, Kiss seriously. my ass. Yeah. If you don't listen to the pre-show and you want to straight up hear Jay Washington fall asleep on a microphone, I don't know what you're talking about. Snoring on a microphone. I have no idea what you're His talking about. His nose was leaning up against it and going. I'm aware of all. I thought, I, I thought he fell asleep on the soundboard and it was a snore. Effect. No, that but it was I'm gonna use it now as Foley for future projects. <laughs> Have a nice day. 
it's uh, I mean, no, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by the hand slap and I, I think it's great. Just yeah. It, the only thing that's counter to the whole situation is that he's on TV this whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so Scott that's, that's kind of weird. Said he should have been suspended. Even if they didn't suspend him, why is he on air? Yeah. Well, I mean, a, you know, just take him off a of TV it's, while it's, they're to, to flash forward it. to what we're going to talk about. Like on a show of fucking video packages, right. he gets TV time. Right? Yeah. But it's business. Right. Uh, ultimately, they might see that they've invested how many weeks in this dude and how many stars at his disposal. Dude had and a panic it, attack it, and left home. Yeah. He left after a panic attack. Uh, so we'll like, be OK. Pro probably, that that's before. probably now we know what the panic attack was about. It wasn't about <laughs> going on air. Sure. He knew the scandal that was coming out. Sure. I feel like that's not at all what I was saying. But sure, um, uh, despite me being unhappy about being shut down just now, you know who else isn't happy right now? No. Killer Cross. Yeah. For a f few reasons. Uh, one, because Marky Extreme paid him a visit at his, comp at his compound, which was very scary. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, because he wants a little bit more money than Impact wants to give him. Yeah, he's, he's uh, it sounds like he's renegotiated. And uh, uh, I know he's a bit older. Mm -hmm. And he's looking out for himself, and I think that's good. You make the play. Did Did you just say he has renegotiated? Meaning, no, I'm saying oh, like oh. that's clearly what you're doing when you ask right. for more money. Yeah. I, I thought it was past tense, meaning like he's already said that he's taking something and they gave him more. So as of right no, now, no, as no. Is this recording, I'm just saying like gotcha. to acknowledge what the action is. Right. Like he's yeah. you know is requesting a release because he wants more money sure like so, that's looking out for you that's, and that's asking like hey so i was doing some research on that and they said cross was seeking a salary comparable to some of the higher level talent currently on the impact roster now some of them are All bringing two in, of them <laughs> and so they are bringing in six figure six figure salaries from the show they said what he is getting pretty much is less than an nxt entry level deal which is about forty five thousand dollars a year and he's been there for a while, and he is one of their more main event players. Yeah, they've, so they've put him in a position uh, where he is a focal point in that company right now, for sure. And he's, mm -hmm. they're not making a lot of money out of Impact because, yeah, they may fly you to and from the tapings, but you got to put yourself up. If you, your baggage, you have to check yourself. You got to put yourself over. <laughs> Transportation, mm -hmm. all of that. So they're, they're not making a lot. And yeah, of course, the guys and gals at Impact, they get to do indie bookings. But a lot of times, that those don't come you know, consistently. So, you know, this is your regular TV job. You're thinking, well, this is going to bring the majority of my income in. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a hundred percent behind. I'm like, look, pay me more. Yeah. Do you, do you, I, I'm always intrigued when these numbers are flying out there. Do you, do y'all think that they tell each other what they make or I hope I, so. I don't, I don't know what any of you guys make. I don't know what anybody that I you, know makes. You know exactly what I make. <laughs> <laughs> Ears happy, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a movie uh, Robert Downey Jr. made less than zero. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, I think ever since the Nash Hall click days when they did share, I think there are pockets of people that share. Right. Yeah, yeah I agree. Sure, yeah, yeah. I think uh, not everybody. Like I, For example, I don't think a killer cross would be talking to the entire Impact roster. Right. Mm. His uh, lady, Scarlett Bordeaux. I think they're sharing what right, each right, of them right. are getting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe a couple others. But, yeah, I think that's a more open discussion now. But with those who yeah. you deem you trust. That's fair. Um, do you guys think that he ends up renegotiating and they keep him? Or do you think he, he's he's scheduled um, for one more taping? Mm -hmm. um, but he's also they got be, slam because of pre-tapes. Yeah, because of pre-tapes, he's still going to be on TV for, I think, another two weeks or three weeks. Okay. Because uh, I think they taped in... I don't know if it was New York or where they taped Philly. Philly, Philly is the next one. Philly, and then New yes. York is the following. Sure. Year. So we've got a few weeks out where they're already in the books. Um, but who knows if he ends up not staying, they might just figure out a way to quickly write him out or just drop it and just move on like to do with so many other talent recently. I would say this. I'd say they can't lose him. No, they can't. Because no. he's he's so uniquely different than the rest of their roster. I agree. They have a lot of X division guys. Um, but they need a big guy. They also, need a big, scary and, guy, and they and don't big have big guy others. with charisma. Because I gave him shit when he debuted because I thought Likewise. that he was he was doing just so many weird things, and he didn't know how to connect with the camera. But literally last week's show, um, and he's slowly been earning my you know uh, I'm, I'm becoming a fan throughout yeah. the weeks. But last week, that one spot with the kendo stick, or was it two weeks ago? Whenever it was, yeah. That look that he gave and with the, Eddie Edwards with the, and the smile where he stole what's is it Kelly the kendo? No, what's the kendo? Kenny. Kenny Kenny the kendo sticks. 
um, that little smirk and that little that bit of like the uh, um, I'm not doing it joy I'm yeah it that was so fun to me I thought it was a great performance he has such a deranged look on his face mm-hmm. but also you kind of like like you know you laugh alongside him in a way right he's he could be a very big player if you know not he isn't already essentially but they should keep him I don't think they can afford to lose him either but if he does go. I also think it's not going to be good for him because I don't think anybody's going to be knocking on his, do- on his door immediately either. That's Yeah, that is tough. You know what I mean? Like, AEW is stacked at this point. WWE, if, sure, if, but if he, he goes... But he is a type, though, which is... is type. There's a, there's always the need for that dark, uh, evil character. So sure. Yeah, he, he has a kind of a, a Randy Orton natural, like, Intensity. meanness intrigue yeah. to him. Yeah, it, it's something... It's really cool to hear you both kind of come around on him because i remember both of you guys being pretty down on him for a while at first especially scotty um where now that's i don't know that's kind of cool that they were able to change all his minds on him and uh, let him shine he started uh, wearing a few more colors generic cross at first it was just like this like all right you're bad guy number two to austin aries and it just wasn't yep he he didn't he didn't have anything to sink his own teeth into nope and and now he has and he was probably just happy to be there at that point too (laughs) sure yeah yeah i mean you know just being honest no absolutely um and, and also that, like i well, what do you want me to do like uh figure it out like <laughs> thanks yeah exactly. yeah just be bad or something yeah be killer okay great the, the austin stand behind austin make him look bigger right <laughs> <laughs> well uh i know jake's been itching to talk about this story which one smooches oh shit luckiest man in the world seth rollins oh i thought you meant becky <laughs> Luckiest the man in the world? Yeah. That too. I like that. that I like too. that. I like that, Scott. Um, thanks for not sleeping during it. It all started... Wait, what happened? Oh, thanks for sleeping? Well done. I, I missed it. Well, were Are you, you sleeping? awake? He keeps saying. he's Now he's mouthing, I'm awake. <laughs> he's like, he's pretending to sleep. You're streaming Mongolia listening. knows what's going on. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Mongolia? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't keep track of your weird every, shit. Every chop on this broadcast is going to be a Mongolian chop. Yeah, Jay, Jay is currently streaming me and a couch uh, to uh, someone yeah. right now. It's a bunch of people they're, they're watching right now. But they're not watching you, though. <laughs> I wanted them to see you, Scott Narver. Yeah, um, yeah, anyways, yeah. I, this all started on Twitter. If you don't follow Becky Lynch on Twitter, you're missing. They met gold. on Twitter, <laughs> not the relationship, oh. the, the outing of the relationship. I would assume you don't know the relationship you started in WWE. Just taking a guess. They um, were on separate shows. It before. probably started in a Wild Wings. You creepo. Who wants it to start <laughs> backstage at work? <laughs> a what? A B- uh, most of them do. A shit. BW3, you think? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, she was, you know, doing some fun vocal sparring with Beth Phoenix. Uh, who, you know, after uh, one or two little back and forth was like, oh, you know, uh, I'm glad that we're so friends, so much friends that we're not petty about the fact that we're tied in title reigns. And so, of short, of course, Becky responds with a photo of Edge saying, yes, we're neck and neck. Um, and then she responds with, oh, we're bringing our men into this. And after that, uh, Becky outs it by saying, I don't know, are we dot, 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 and then tags Rollins. And that was the big sort of like, oh, ooh, they're an item. And then, of course, uh, on the heels of that, uh, Seth Instagrams a photo of them locking lips backstage, being all cute. Uh, that's what a cute photo that one is. My goodness, right? But you know what? Um, that's talk about a power couple. In WB right now, you got your Universal Champion and your Dual Women's Champion uh, shacking up. Do you think that this becomes storyline ever? Oh, fuck no. I mean, with the way <laughs> WWE treats every single relationship like storyline, with the exception of right now, maybe. Uh, freaking uh, Naomi and the Oos and Jimmy was it Jimmy or Jay? She's married to <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> John, John. It's well, John. she's married to one, but she's, she's married- smooching with another. <laughs> yeah, you never really. I mean, we brought it up. The only time they really used it was the mixed match challenge. You no, know, but it's it's a no, recurring it's, thing. No, it's been on when they were on SmackDown. It was yeah. there for a long time. Oh, I didn't. And that's for, oh, but, the Mandy Rose whole thing. Yeah, I'm and sorry. Before bro. that, yeah. really, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but almost, marriage, but marriage is a different game in WWE sure. than dating. Yeah, sure. absolutely. They usually absolutely. don't lean into dating, especially with their top stars. John Cena and and Nikki was, you know, right. they tried to keep that under wraps for a long time until I total think it would be or total battles. Right, but that's with a camera. I, I, again, I think this is something that they definitely plan. Yeah, they might have done it in this way, but Becky probably had to make sure it was cool. Right, <laughs> like I don't. Right. And they already had those photos out there of them at a concert, like holding hands or kissing or something. I don't mm-hmm. remember. So I think the cat was already out of the bag. So if they wanted to do something fun with it, they had the permission to do so at that time. I mean, they're 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 the two top people. To your point, right? They couldn't be any higher right now. So uh, they they don't just go too free willy on on that stuff. 
to Dale's now, point, was Free Willy a pun on Seth Rollins' previous release dick pics? Oh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, to Dale's point, yeah, they definitely don't want to touch dating stuff because I think Matt Hardy, Edge, and Lita set the precedent for that. <laughs> yeah, right. buddy. Oh my goodness. It's like, yeah, right. you mean one of the coolest angles ever? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> With a terrible ending. I mean, but they uh, were all yeah. professional about it. Uh, ish. That's <laughs> yeah. Ish. That's most sex life things. I feel like. Real good build up, terrible ending. Yeah, but but to acknowledge like, yeah, they're dating, they're dating, they're right. dating, rather than I think if that all were to occur now, it's like, all right, Matt and Lita, we're not we're not putting you together unless you're married. Right, right. Like we're not, we're just not gonna bother with that. I've heard they've actually struck forgot who the hell it was recently. They stopped they wanted to stop their relationship. It was on the rock, the WWE. Uh, Luke rock. Harper and WWE. Beside that relationship. Oh. No, there was actually a uh wrestlers they were dating. And the WWE was adamantly against it. I, God damn it, I got to You're not talking about Charlotte, are you? And uh, Triple Andrade? H and Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> I'm sure they were really against that. The Miz's mom and the Miz's dad. Mm, sinners. Well, let's just go in the last story while... Uh, we got one more? Yeah. Oh, hit me with it. Leo Rush wants his release, <gasps> apparently. Oh, he's rushing how, out of I there. I don't know if that's a rumor or not. Oh no, that's actually. I thought they wanted. I thought they wanted him released. <laughs> so what it was, the WWE offered him a new five-year, three hundred thousand dollar contract, and Leo Rush told them to double it, and they were like, "Fuck out of here!" Six years, <laughs> all right. And so Same he, amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Fuck out of here!" And so he was asking them. For, he said, "Well, give me my release." And the WWE was like, "Are you fucking serious? No, we're not going to give you because they know if they give him his release." Exactly what he's gonna do in ninety days. What? Go to AEW. What? You, Is I, he? I people. I love that. That's always a speculation. Like they are invited to. Well, AEW. I think Leo Rush would be a person to definitely go because he hasn't been utilized as the Leo Rush in the ring as much as we. All the know. more reason of why would he go? If yeah. He's not if he doesn't have the fan base and the exactly and the acclaim. You're saying with what it. you're saying argues there, if that he, yeah, if he was a lady, fans might like him, but if he yeah. was a lady, I think it'd be different. Okay, but like another, so like a Sasha Banks, another cruiserweight type. Like they're good. Fair, fair. The the two are booking the show. Uh, total sidebar, by the way. But yeah, the, the, they don't they don't have a lot of black guys though. This is very true. They're, they're not getting a lot from the Chinese company. <laughs> <laughs> they black brought guys. zero black guys with them, if you can believe it. Um, by the way, there's a total sidebar, but I just want to mention it before I forget because it was hilarious. Did anybody see that photo of Pac uh, autographing uh, like an eight by ten for a little kid? in full like grimace i hate this little kid <laughs> character really it's hilarious it's like him literally crouching on the ground and there's this adorable child who looks petrified and it's him <laughs> like to sign this autograph but he has his face on like you know he's the dirty heel and he That's hates great. everybody it's so good i love it and you're right they don't need another a small flippy guy in aw but uh, wherever leo rush ends up i'm sure i won't care <laughs> that's on cast news What are you doing on Sunday, fellas? Um, on Sunday, uh, um, I know what I'm prolong doing. it. I know uh, what I'm doing. It. I don't got no. Plans. I know what I'm doing first. Watching the finale of Game of Thrones. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's the final episode. What's that? Now? Oh, that is that is an unfortunate timing. The finale huh? of Game of Thrones is this Sunday. What's what's Isn't this? Why what's, people have been not liking it? I feel like it's sporting, very fortunate it's for a them. sporting event of some uh, sort. Oh yeah, these dragons. This one dragon flies around and tries to kill Ultimo the dragon. No, this Damian one. Damien Dragon, my trainer. Shout out to Damien Dragon. No, Ricky the Dragon. Ricky Dragon Steamboat? Yeah. <gasps> oh, is it like the version with the Komoda and the spinning fire? And he's, he's rolled on the back by a platinum blonde white woman. Now, that sounds like a real story. That's, <laughs> real. That was true, though. <laughs> His wife is a platinum blonde woman. <laughs> but yeah, I think, like you said, that I think the WWE had no, they had to know that they were up against this. I mean, it doesn't matter. No, I don't, I don't, made so far in advance. I don't know if you remember when the. Uh, the UK tournament happened, the second one, or <laughs> yeah, the second one that was in London. It was the same night as England in the World Cup. Right. It was just like a very unfortunate, you know, I think both parties have their schedules up pretty early. I, I think that sometimes they just have to fall into other things like, yeah. well, whatever. I mean, not People for nothing, watch but Game of Thrones. Exactly. And also 
people are buying tickets to go to the show. And yeah, we're yeah. on demand and yeah. you could watch it all later. It's they don't release their numbers for anything. One stuff could anyway, argue so. that every single night WWE is up against something. Yeah, maybe not to right. the scale. It's, a, it's of an ever going show that's but. on three to four nights a week. Exactly. Roughly. Yeah. So they I don't think they'd go like, Oh man, but we all want to watch I, Game of Thrones together. I think they look at it and decide if it's important enough to worry about it. And I, I think something like an hour long finale, they were like, eh, well, what are we going to do? Yeah, we, we, we got a three, four hours <laughs> pay per view anyway. <laughs> I, want, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Baron Corbin comes out on the mic and gonna, fucking spoils it. I was going to say, be amazing. they should totally just W, <laughs> they should WCW that shit. <laughs> Just WCW, bring out some, bring out some heel, or, or have Elias like make a song out of what happens at the end. <laughs> yeah, anybody, just do it. So I, this I is who saddle now and throw. Barry Corbin comes out with a legal pad full of everything that happened in Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's funny. That's but, a good idea. But actually. speaking of which, Money in the Bank is happening this Sunday. Oh shit, really? Yeah, the pay per view money in the bank. You know we. I'm oh, sorry, we, I was asleep. It was a ha 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 ha. <laughs> You're never living that one down. Motherfuckers dude. got one more sleep joke. I'm wide awake. You went. You went from the doodle man to the sleepy man real quick. Johnny left. Who was the sleepy man before? It's now true. You inherited man. it. Hey man, fuck. I understand Johnny how tired he was. We do a lot of shit. Uh, they've recently added some matches to the card. To yeah, the pre show. To, no, these are not pre show. These are the ones that are going to go on while Game of Thrones is on the air. <laughs> the kick. <laughs> we'll get what what times this will start. Four p.m. Pacific. Know. Who knows anymore? So where is it? It's a. It, it's where, in Connecticut. It's in Connecticut. So then it'll be you know whatever time the actual game of. So it'll be like in real time. Meaning, eight, yeah, eight. Well, eight nine o'clock. No, it's not going to be nine o'clock. The, the pay per view like, will probably start eight eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is the pay per view. Oh, yes. it's on the nose. Oh okay, you, you West Coast people are all messed up on your times. Well, because I always feel what like it starts. I always feel like they start at four here nowadays, which would be seven o'clock East Coast time. Right. I feel yeah. I feel if, like if it's if we're counting the pre show, but uh, we were just talking about whenever I f follow whenever I go to try and watch one of the big ones, it's like oh, it has a special start right. time of noon. It's an hour no, earlier. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. oh shit, I right. thought I had it down. Right. Yeah. So I never <laughs> learn. Um, so anyway, so then yeah, maybe the first hour of the show is just kind of they don't maybe like the actual order of the matches are going to be oh, well, let's put our least invested in matches while game of thrones i don't is think on so there. isn't game of thrones like a nine or a ten o'clock slot oh i assumed it was eight i assumed it was it's like prime nine time. it's nine on east coast okay so, yeah. so perfect so your middle of the card kind of uh you know lull matches sure one of the money in the bank ones blah 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 yeah <laughs> namesake shame shake um Ugh, anyways i stepped do. on you because i was making sleepy jokes but they added two new matches jay yeah, uh, the Usos will be taking on Daniel Bryan and Rowan for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Wait, that's one of the new matches? Yes, that's one of the new matches. Yeah. So, they added, so they added three new matches then? Yeah, well, two of these they were added. added they added that during SmackDown. Gotcha. And they also have added Mandy Rose. I'm sorry, the Kabuki Warriors, excuse All right. me, All right. will take on. Yes, that's their Hang name. On. Let's just stop right here. Nope, nope. The, the, the Viking Raiders, the Kabuki Warriors. It's officially 1985 again in <laughs> WWE. What is with these fucking names? Can you please at least come up with a second idea? So before you put look, it makes sense because Paige wears so much pasty makeup on her face. What else are you going to call them? Oh, that's inappropriate. I so don't actually, that. Oscar wanted to call themselves the Kabuki Ladies. This Girls. was Oscar's idea. This is this was Oscar's idea at first because of the Kabuki mask that she wears. Hey, they're not Team Kabuki. <laughs> you mean Team Bukaki? I just want to say thank. I know we've mentioned it a couple times. Thank God, Jay's uh, Johnny's not here right now with that soundboard because we would never hear the end of that fucking clip today. <laughs> What's <Kabuki? okay. laughs> Thanks, Dale. But uh, yeah, so that I'm trying to find the other ones. I I know there was another Ari Davari so, cruiserweight well, title. Oh yeah, we, that, we, but no, I thought that was already the, announced. Yeah, last week, oh. but we never mentioned it. Wait, are we are we done talking about Kabuki Warriors? <laughs> I mean, we can we can come Let's, back to it, or we can harp on it. Whatever you want to do, buddy. It's a uh, round. Do table. it. <laughs> well, I so I mean, it, yeah. That's the the backstory goes that she wanted they wanted to be the Kabuki girls, but the creative or whoever was like that doesn't sound punchy enough. So they changed them to Kabuki Warriors. I don't. I mean, I, I like to the, the hear that it came from them. I mean, my initial reaction to it was definitely like, hmm. right, right. Weird, but <laughs> it's, it's weird mean, too. And then uh, most of the Asuka, girls in my uh, life tweeted, have been punchy. I'm I'm sure. Uh, all three of them. I the Asuka <laughs> tweeted the definition of uh, Kabuki Mono, which is basically Asuka to a T. So you should look at her 
tweet about it. But I mean, I, I totally get where the idea came from, but I feel like surely somebody was like, oh, it doesn't sound great. But yeah, it also, it I've also doesn't Kabuki include... to be like a performer and it's dance and it's right. makeup. And like, that makes sense to me. But, like, I don't find it like, oh, that's that's inappropriate or that's not okay. It's like, it's Kabuki. Yeah. What, what's I, wrong I with I guess Kabuki? the nerd in me sa- thinks that like, oh, it doesn't incorporate any of who Kairi Sane is. It's no, like it's, she's a fucking pirate. Yeah. So and she didn't. So then why are no they the Kabuki pirates still, it's, then? The Kabuki, Kabuki, your sense of what Kabuki is is different than what Kabuki actually is for what what they're talking about. It's more about weird clothing, not like a specific. Like we always think of Kabuki as the the very specific white face with like a big person and they have a red robe on. You know, like a traditional Kabuki. But they're they're saying like Kabuki is just weird clothing. Like unusual person wants you to stare at them, kind of has a lot of flair. So it, uh. it does include Kyrie. So it is, is Paige then. Paige does fit in this. Yeah. Yeah, she does. I mean, to an extent. She uh, shops a lot of hot topics. But it's theatrical. Like, that's what I think of it too, as like Kabuki I always knew to be a form of Japanese theater. You know. So it's like, yeah, the these two are some of the most theatrical performers in WWE. Then why don't just call them Kabuki? If, if they added Sonya Deville in it, it's like, no, get out of here. You are not that. <laughs> Look, I'm fine with all of that it, as long as they do one important thing. Fix their damn music. The blend they are trying to do between Oscar and Kari Sane yeah. music gives me a goddamn headache. Like, I, like <laughs> they've, had, they've had three weeks now? Or, yeah, that's or what I'm saying. They've more. had three they, weeks and we haven't gotten it. it. Yeah. They'll figure it out. They're still figuring out what to do with Cesaro for his entrance and music that's and all true. that. Like, yeah. there's clearly like, well, are we going to reform a thing again? Are we going to end pains. this? What? What are we doing? That one was especially weird to me because he doesn't even really play into it. He's just like, yeah, that happened. Remember when we used to do that thing? Okay, well, I'm out here now. And then this, he, like, past, runs out. <laughs> this past week on, uh, on Raw, then he's walking out in the beam of white light. Right. And it's like, all right, you're, you, why don't you stop? Can you see where you're going right now? Oh, you're talking about us. I'm sorry because I'm still looking <laughs> at the map. Yeah, I, I was shocked when they did the Titan Tron thing of the pictures of the poses, like same four poses. Mm-hmm. I was like, Okay, I thought it was cool when I saw the first four, but then it just repeated. I was like, this is weird now. Yeah, there's there's clearly <laughs> some flux going on. It, it seems like one of those create a Titan Trons from one of the video games from like four years ago. Sure. <laughs> it has like it just repeats a little bit too yeah, much. Like four slides. Yeah, exactly. I would have rather him make the pose. I'm sorry. I would have rather him did the pose that he does with Seamus just by himself. But he can't because he's supposed to hide behind Seamus first and like creep around him. Yeah. I mean, he can still do the creep around by himself. I mean, look at a cardboard cut out. An imaginary. Yeah. That would be so dope, Scott. He had a car. It's a cardboard cut out of Seamus every week. But it's wrestling. Then he has to travel with it. Oh, jeez. He has to be in the airports with it. That's a whole. Again, that through security is a pain in the ass. He gets to get right in the carpool lane, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it for that, honestly, depending on the city. So these are the matches for the actual pay per view, aside the three we just mentioned on the kickoff show. Should we just give our predictions as we uh, let's, go through them? Let's go through them. Uh, I'll start with this one. Let's do this first and foremost. The Money in the Bank men's ladder match. With from Raw, you've got now Sami Zayn. We'll talk about how he got into that. Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and from SmackDown SmackDown Live, Ali, Finn Balor, Andrade, and Randy Orton. Scott? Sami Zayn. 100%. Really? Yep. Dang. Can you go explain why real quick? Uh, Because he's the biggest asshole amongst them all. Uh, you have to have uh, I I feel you have to have one heel win it, uh, the Money in the Bank, and he is just the smarmiest, uh, just biggest uh, loudmouth character there is amongst all these. There's been a lot of winners before. People like Drew McIntyre are fine; they don't need to carry around a briefcase to be a threat. They are a threat, but Sami Zayn being just uh, gloating about it and having it to to get under everybody's skin. It's it's so fitting. Mm, Dale? My pick was Andrade until Sami Zayn came in. I think Andrade is a lot of what Scott just said, uh, except he, he needs a better springboard, whereas Sami can come out there. He's, he's just shot the shit for, what, a, almost a month now and really didn't have anything in particular to talk about, you know, or, or promote. This, this briefcase would be perfect for him. But I kind of think that he has a good story going without it as well. And somebody like Andrade is is a bit has the talent and is a little floundering at the moment. And and they obviously still like him. And this would at least give him a little bit better of a of a real estate. Okay, Jake. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to mirror the exact same thing that they said. Uh, 100%. It's going to be a heel. It's got to be a heel. My pick before the announcement was also Andrade because like <laughs> he needs it. And it would be great to have... Uh, um, uh, God, this is Lena um, Vega? Thank you. I, would, I always struggle with the name. Um, her carrying it around ringside with him just looks nice. Um, but then Sammy is on fire. He gets added to the match. It's too perfect. If I had to pick an additional backup, I would say Baron Corbin. It would be great to have him rewin it, mm-hmm. then actually win the title with it so that he like undoes that thing, which will make people hate him even more. Right. Um, undoing the like one of the first ever losing cash ins, really. And then having the announcement on top of that. Yep, exactly. Uh, so I feel like it's going to be a heel. I would bet everything that it's one of those three, but I'm going for Sami Zayn, especially because last entrance, that's what they like to do that. Anytime they shove somebody in the match at the very, very end, you can almost exclusively assure you that that's the one who's going to win it. Well, that's true, but also he did replace Braun because Braun is injured. He actually, they don't know if it's fully a bot. I, I don't, I don't know. If the, I think that they were always going to replace Braun. You think they were always going to do I, it? I think this was the plan all along. Okay. My pick, honestly, and it kind of goes to one of the things you said, Scott, my pick was McIntyre. Because I think we see Sammy can do this and just take what he's been doing. Mm -hmm. We see Andrade needing something as well. I think Drew McIntyre has been poised to be put in this position and get right out of this. He's right at the mid card, just main event, but not the main main event. You know what I'm saying? Like he's at a raw main event. But that's that's my argument for why it won't be him. Because at any given week. If he came out there and was like, Seth, you're a piece of crap, or I guess, I don't know who knows what fucking show he's on anymore, but whatever, wild card rule. Uh, he comes out and he says, I deserve a shot, and then uh, whoever goes, you know what, you got a shot, then everybody believes it. But that's the thing, we've been teasing that with McIntyre a little bit for a while, how he was going to, I'm going to be the guy that wins this, I'm going to do this. And I think putting the briefcase in his hand, I understand the whole look of having Drew McIntyre carry the briefcase around. It's dopey. It, yeah. it looks dopey. But that opportunity being present for him, as dangerous as he is, they got Braun and him on the same trajectory, both yeah. heel and face. Of like their opportunities keep keep getting taken, or someone screws it up right. for them. Yeah. So I feel like they're still okay to keep doing that and get screwed sure. in their own ways. I think. Uh, I think Money in the Bank uh, on McIntyre. You might as well just call up Jinder and uh, and uh, what's his face Heath. And just throw them back together because it's the exact same trajectory he's going to have if he wins this Money in the Bank briefcase. Because <gasps> he's going to lose it. Okay. Let's do the women's. The women's Money in the Bank from Raw, Natalia, Dana Brooke, Naomi, Alexa Bliss. And for SmackDown Live, Bailey, Mandy, Rose, Ember, Moon, and Carmella. I'll start with you first, Dale. Oh, Lord. Um, this one's a little tougher for me. I feel like Ember Moon has the right amount of nothing going <laughs> right now. <laughs> um <laughs> Bailey feels really weird and sad lately. I don't know what's going on. If they're just like, well, here, fill this time. And she's like, I'm not, I'm not in the shadows. I don't know. There's something weird going on with Bailey. So I don't know if they were going to do a character change, a winning of the money in the brief case. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> money in the out. brief. Yo, could you imagine it was actual money in that briefcase it's, at the it's, top? It's Andre the, money. the giant <laughs> over too. the briefcase <laughs> bank in the money. <laughs> God damn Andre 3000. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I kind of feel like, man, that would be a great way to reboot Bailey into something more interesting, but I I just don't see that happening. So I'm gonna go with Ember Moon. Jake. Um yeah, this is a fucking you could have roll a dice to be honest with you. My thought is probably Alexa Bliss with the help of Nikki Cross. Um there was a thing that happened on this week's Raw and or SmackDown. They've just both been combined in my head at this point. Um, after Nikki wins, I also That's think this, I also think there's a good possibility that Nikki ends up in this match somehow because she, they, she literally beat three of the women in this match mm-hmm. on on the go home yeah. show. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there was a moment. And Dana Brooke is in it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, there was a moment uh, that WWE did a very bad job of of uh, showing that Nikki was doing great work, and that was after the win. After she wins, uh, Alexa comes out, jumps on the ladder, and. Uh, runs up the ladder and is doing the whole hold the briefcase thing. Mm-hmm. They start zooming in on her and then there's like a lower third on the corner that's advertised money in the bank. And the lower third is kind of covering what Nikki's doing. But if you look closely, what she's doing is she's pointing at the briefcase and screaming, I won, I won, I won. And I'm like, oh, that is a great character. Act- a woman, a woman who takes anything that Alexa does as a victory for herself as sort of this like deranged mm. helper and I, I love that. I, I could see her helping her win. To add on to that, there's a small bit you missed right before that 
N- Nikki actually tries to climb the ladder, and Alexa stops oh, her. Oh, I I, I didn't but, miss it. No, I, no, I, but I, I'm remember. just saying. Yeah. yeah, Nikki climbs the ladder. So uh, for myself, I this is a shot in the dark. Like this could be anybody. Alexa Bliss seems like an obvious choice, but I'm gonna echo what Dale said. I'm going with Bailey because this way we take her out of that shadow. She needs something to hold her own because she's fallen into somewhat of an obscurity since this whole her and Sasha thing. Since they just threw her on SmackDown, they're like, look, you're going to go on SmackDown. Sasha's just holding out. We, She needs something. So I think this would be, this may be it for Bailey because, again, it, Becky's going to keep both belts, in my opinion. We'll talk about that later. Bailey versus Sasha, I mean, versus, versus Becky would be a great matchup. Scott? Dana Brooke. No, I'm kidding. No, I thought you were so. Come on, now. I thought you were so damn serious. Hey, I, someone's <laughs> pitching it backstage, though. I'm sure that it's like, hey, it'd be totally unexpected. Up until that, spending yeah, a little Dana bit Brooke too much is time. Pitching that. That's the only person I think is pitching that. <laughs> right. If she was a heel, I would stand by that choice. Um, Dana Brooke, sure. yes, okay, but she's a face-ish uh, type character. Um, but I, I, my, I predict that Sasha Banks is going to screw Bailey out of getting the Money in the Bank briefcase during that match. Um, Ooh. Ooh. but I my pick is Naomi I think for this one you go face because you've had two heels win it in the past okay. and now yeah. this is Naomi's deserving path back to the championship and good lord she's going to make the briefcase glow that's great. Like, that's the, just that's, gonna be cool. I think that's the main thing. You just want Scott as a glowing well, briefcase. Damn right. You want to see it's, the briefcase slide with her? I told you they they weren't gonna not use Mister Monster in the Bank or would miss. You know what I mean? Like anytime there's a shtick involved, they're mm-hmm. gonna use it. And having the, a glowing briefcase is brilliant. The glow in the bank. Also, not yeah. to mention she's. They gave her like these kind of meaningless ro- uh, battle royal victories recently. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And. It would be nice that she won something that actually had a fucking like outcome that we cared about. So yeah, she's I like in that, that top tier of of women, I like and I think she needs more credits under her belt because we've got so many with Charlotte and uh, even Carmella. Yeah, that. So I think they need to start padding it out. Which is, I mean, we got the tag team titles, we got the Money in the Bank. Like right. that's yeah. what this will allow. I so, like it. Let's go to since we're in the we're talking about the women. Let's talk about the SmackDown women's. Uh, championship match Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch Jake I think Becky two belts uh, bit off more than she can chew belts um, I think that whoever whichever match goes second she might lose okay. and that might be the story the okay. story might be now I also the question here is like which one do you think they're going to put on first I'm assuming they're going to do Lacey Evans first I would think so and I think she so, yeah. wins and then she beats Lacey or I mean hell maybe they want to make a new star and they're going to pull Becky over to SmackDown full time. And so, you know, full time. Seven quote, on that show. Quote, they don't do that. Now. They don't do that. Yeah, well, seven. Hey, they're not married. Like you said, they don't give a shit if you're dating. Um, Andrade and I don't Charles. know. This, I think that this story, if you would have asked me two weeks ago, I would have said guaranteed there's no world where she's losing these belts yet. They need to run this for this while. But now I'm they really laid into that on the commentary this week of like, really, whoever goes second is going to be at a huge advantage. And now I'm thinking like, oh, they said that quite a lot, which makes me concerned. So you That's think so, story. Charlotte, let's say hypothetically Charlotte's the second match. Then, then, then I think it might they might give it to Charlotte, even though I don't want I want her just to keep these two belts until uh, a cash in of some sort, because the only way it makes sense for her to lose one. OK, Dale. Yeah, I I can't remember when the cash in happened. Uh, last year, Alexa at, did at the pay, it during the pay-per-view, During the pay-per-view. Right? Yeah, during the pay-per-view. Yeah. So it seems like they, it'd be weird to pull that trigger again. Because I feel like they are, you know, they always want you to look at what they're, you know, snapping their fingers at, not what's going on behind their back kind of vibe. So I, I feel like if they want us to think the second person's going to win, would they do another cash-in at the pay-per-view? Because you, you feel like she made it through. She beat both of them. That's crazy. And then she has to wrestle somebody else? Or do they, you know, I, I mean, don't know. I'm... If Bailey won the briefcase, that would actually be a really fun thing. If it was Bailey cashing in, and then you know, just because you you have the history, you have the whole for horsewoman story, these freaking packages they've been playing like constantly about. Mm-hmm. Here's the entire history of this person's career. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would make for a good story. Scott Narver. Um, I am going with Charlotte via DQ. So okay. she'll win, so, but, no but she doesn't get the title. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will go. For me, I'm going sharp. I mean, I'm going Becky. Here's why. I believe she bar- Becky barely makes it out of that match with Lacey Evans. And in the process, Lacey Evans tries to interfere with the match with Charlotte, inadvertently hits Charlotte with a woman's right. Becky turns around, puts the disarm on her. Bam. 
Becky two belts. Then we get the cash in. Mm. Then we get. The, I think they're going to do gonna it again. Ca- but if they cash in, then like they're, they're going to cash in on Becky while she's on her feet after a victory. No, no. Like Becky is beat up. Like she's beat up in this match. And Lacey Evans is so frustrated she lost the earlier match. She comes down and oh, yeah, I got that part. But I, if you're going to have a cash in at the end, I always feel like it's better to cash in on someone laying on their back. You know what I mean? Like if she's oh, going to get the victory. Yeah, but it's not always saying she gets that clear cut. She's standing up proud victory. It's one of those she took a ass whooping victories. Which will bring us to the Raw Women's title. Lacey Evans versus Becky Lynch. Scott? Becky Lynch. Uh, handily. You think that's simple? Yeah. I, I don't think it'll be. I think there'll be some back and forth, but mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a pretty clear cut win that Becky gets. Okay. Dale? I think they did a great job of making us all forget about the walking out and just showing off her outfits. Lacey Evans. I think this has been a, a pretty decent run for her to get to this point so early in her career, especially, mm-hmm. but I, I, I can't imagine that they would actually put the title on her. She's still got a lot of green to her. I just think, you know, it's been nice to see her progress, but I can't imagine they feel that she's progressed enough to be the main woman on the show. Yeah. Quite yet. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And actually I thought she was very good during that like dual contract signing, which I thought was yeah. a really fun segment because we've never really seen a dual contract signing thing. Mm-hmm. So it was fun that they did this the way that they did this. I think that, Whenever Becky would throw something kind of off script or just like a quick little one liner thing, that that's when you saw, oh, Lacey actually can do this. Like Lacey it can be quick witted. She has she's understands her character. She's the listening. Idol, yes. She's listening. She's engaged. She's, you know, those PC improv classes have been working out because mm-hmm. she's definitely in the moment. I'm very sensitive. Um <laughs> uh but it's weird because then she starts talking with the stuff that feels scripted and then you're like, oh, this isn't as good. So I think once they allow her just to be kind of the person that she is or, you know, whatever that character is on her own, I think she's actually gonna be really good on the mic, uh, which is considering how bad her start was is big, big progress. But I also don't think there's any world where she's winning the title that night mm-hmm. unless maybe she goes on second and they just want to do something <laughs> surprising. Way to cover all your ground. <laughs> I <laughs> I personally is that a show on the WB Network covering ground? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this put one person won. Unless they go the other way, then the other person wins. <laughs> I think I'm, all I'm going to say, it's definitely going to be at least one of the two of them. Mm, I think that's uh, <laughs> you're neglecting your whole money in the bank, son. <laughs> I honestly think, first of all, I, I will talk about this more in depth. I Let's think, start with the second of all. <laughs> the first of all, I think she was horrible. Lacey Evans was horrible on Monday. I thought you were going to say something different. I was you like, that's really horrible. Offensive. I thought she really? was horrible. And I'll go more in depth about that. But as far as the match, I think, again, Becky takes a beating. But she pulls out the disarmor at the last minute, goes over on Lacey Evans. That's why I feel like that one's going to happen. But why did you think she was horrible on Monday? Well, more so like Lacey is good when they, I, for me, when they give her scripted stuff, she knows how to stay on point. It's weird. So we're completely Yeah, opposite. we're completely opposite She's on terrible it. terrible on the script. <laughs> when Charlotte, when Becky was throwing out random stuff, you knew Lacey couldn't handle it all because the crowd got to her when she had to go, nah, 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 nah. that's when you lost it. You don't know what to say at Wait, that point. I don't, what, what is, oh, when she did the mocking? Yeah. That's uh, when you don't have anything to say as a comeback. No, I, 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 I feel like it's Ronda Rousey not saying anything right. is when you don't have anything to say for a comeback. Oh, that's a definite too. I think that I agree with you. Also, there was something weird about this. Was this pre-taped? Do we know? Yeah, because there was something yeah. weird about the the crowd edit or the sound or something. Something was going on during this segment that made me feel like we weren't getting the full contract signing or something. There, the, the it was very disjointed in the audio department. I agree. I remember thinking that the reactions from the crowd were very, very weird. There was a lot of random oohs and ahs and cheers that didn't fit anything that was happening in the ring. It I was, didn't know if it was one of those times where someone drunk was getting thrown out of the, right. the audience or something. Yeah. And they're telling them to, you know, go away or leave because they all acknowledged a chant at one point. I couldn't tell what it was, right. but yeah, it you're seemed right. like it wasn't involving anything. what was on stage. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We know. I do know that our very own Mickey Bell. Uh, was there so maybe we can get the scoop from him on exactly what was happening maybe he was causing some shit <gasps> it's uh, mickey's fault with the compadre shirt on stop rolling your r's <laughs> damn it <laughs> here's a match that i really don't understand why it's happening on this pay-per-view roman reigns versus elias jake lloyd i'm coming to you what? first you don't understand why the biggest name in the company is having a match with the guy that's trying to make a top heel <sighs> you know how many times we've said that like this match is not i'll, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts later but yeah I mean, Roman wins. We have so much coming up later. Or from you. yeah, or he loses, 
because he gets screwed over and we're just building a, you know, a baby face. We've covered all of Jake's <laughs> picks here. Well, I'm giving you the he's either going to win because of A or he's going to lose because of B. <laughs> Jake basically gives I, you I don't pick care. like his own roulette table. I, I, don't, I don't have a prediction. You're perfect for like 90s commentary. <laughs> Dale, <laughs> it's a compliment. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with what Jay is saying here. Where this is not a good follow up. So they gave us his return match at WrestleMania, and I feel like this feels exactly the same amount of heat. Like there's nothing really going on here that motivates me. It's like, oh yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm glad he's back and he's healthy, and but he's here fighting another feud that doesn't feel like there's much on it. Like good guy, bad guy. Okay. But I don't know. I I kind of don't care who wins this. I don't. I don't really. There's nothing at stake here for me, Scott. This is. Uh, I would fault the follow through of Elias. Uh, yeah. Character with this. Uh, not him, but it's he was tied with the McMahon's. This is Vince saying this is the biggest acquisition we've ever had. Shane's sort of in his corner. You have all this wild card stuff where he's there and he's not. Um. It's to establish that we hate Elias so much and Roman Reigns is going to put him in his place. Same with Drew McIntyre. Like he's just this ongoing threat that Roman's going to put in his place and he's back and it's keeping Roman distracted from going for any title. So mm. they're buying time until a SummerSlam or something like that with Roman. So I'm fine with it. I'm fine with the big hero coming back and squashing uh, the, you know, the bad guy wrestlers. So it I, makes sense to me. I definitely do agree that this is a buy time uh, match for Roman. This is a holdover till, like you say, SummerSlam, potentially Survivor Series, whatever the case. I just feel like we're just we just needed something to put Roman in. This goes back to I would have rather seen Finn Balor not be in the Money in the Bank. I'd rather see him defend the IC title. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're gonna put him in something that people are gonna care about. We don't know if Elias, one moment he's a heel, next minute he's a face. I get this whole Shane McMahon thing, he's a heel. I really don't care who wins or loses in this one, unfortunately. That's why I just have no real prediction for this one. No, it's 50-50. Or I could cover ground like Jake. Definitely one of the two of them will win. <laughs> uh, for the Universal title, Seth Rollins versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. Dale? Uh... I want AJ to win, but it seems so early to bounce the title. Yeah. But I just I feel like in order for AJ to be respected on Raw, if we just ignore the wild card thing, I think that it would be nice to have him go over and maybe maybe this is the the somebody wins by DQ thing, but they don't get the title. Maybe maybe that situation. But I, I just feel like AJ needs this way more than Seth does at, at this very moment. Scott and Narver. I'm going AJ because I keep thinking Seth is losing his momentum. Um, I, I, I just don't think he has what Kofi has or mm -hmm. so many other people that think is more interesting with him chasing and doing the stuff. And AJ, uh, I feel he gets it. Uh, I think AJ wins the match, but not the title because of DQ, like uh, sort of uh, what you're saying. Actually, it might be the other way around. Rather, I, I, Seth wins via DQ. I think uh, it's it's a Joe situation. Mm. Uh, remember when he, you know, AJ kind of shows that other side of him. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Maybe maybe the club is involved in some capacity. Maybe because he has been being very heel like lately. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe uh, they are going to hold this over to another victory, another time down the road. But this is just the first step in this uh, series, so to speak. Right. I don't want to see the WWE print out any phenomenal Slayer shirts. So <laughs> I because like, that's what they do. He beat Triple H. We got King Slayer shirts. Oh, we so, got it. We understood what you were doing. Yeah, I don't. But I'm just saying, I don't want to see that. So I feel those are ma those are mania ones, though. Yeah, just only mania. Yeah. OK, because we've only had two. Yeah, fair, fair. I just I would love to see it on AJ right now. And I agree with you completely, Scott. His his title reign isn't as as pumped up as they thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. it, it, do, it doesn't it's about the win it wasn't about the rain well you yeah. know you you get the win of course the win yeah. is supposed to be big but you still want to be able to have him come like his first two three weeks he's still the universal champion it's a champion that's on raw that we're going to see every week there's so much shit that's gone on around him that is upstaged him in every way absolutely we've had a superstar shake up we're having wild cards we're having um god just stuff i'm, I'm just the money in the about. bank build up money in the bank build up we've had roman reigns return 
uh, f- from leukemia. Like we have all these uh, Dean leaving. Right. Mm-hmm. Like the two other members of the Shield have more interesting stories going on <laughs> in their own personal lives right. than Seth on screen. Very true. Right. So yeah, I I really think it's AJ Styles. Just say you know what. Let him, he'll get it later. He'll get it again. So wait, what you're saying then, Scott, is that that the whole thing with Becky is just WWE did that to give him a little something extra. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So then he is Seth Two Belts. Is a conspiracy. Ooh. Uh, the yeah, myth- it's interesting that they could take the time to build uh, Lacey Evans so easily or quickly or or properly, however you want to look at it. But I, I don't think that AJ versus Seth has gotten that same amount of attention. No, I, I mean, I don't know. They, I think it's just that their promos, like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, this was a respectful feud at first. And those promos are always really boring for a while. <laughs> they just did a video package yeah. on Raw where they finally tried to pump it up even harder when they used the 2006 footage yeah, of them when, wrestling. When they're like, oh, we wrestled once before. Yeah. And it's like, it still didn't, for me personally, get any type of, th- any hype behind it. Because it wasn't, it wasn't the two of them in the ring, you know, screaming profanities at each other it's what i've said in the past about this stuff where it's very cool that when they do that but right. if they haven't wrestled for 10 years before that then they're still feeling each other out as right. good as they are they're not going to have the matches th- that are uh that you want th- that are aj styles versus samoa joe that right. are uh, yeah, yeah. chris benoit and chris jericho that they've been wrestling so much that when they're on the big stage it's like oh we got right. this right right no problem <laughs> yeah and this, but this is one that I felt like too. We we touched on this a couple episodes ago, but where this was such, at least from my standpoint, AJ versus Seth could have been billed as a much bigger situation at a SummerSlam or or, you know, as a champ versus champ or something. There's something here that I yeah. feel like they missed the boat on making this feel as important as it truly should be for something that hasn't really happened. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like. They, they missed the momentum on something that could have been a lot. Huge. And I agree with you on that, Dale. I think the fact they were so concerned with money in the bank, they were like, we need a challenger for Seth as well. And again, you supposed to, you save up that AJ Styles one because yeah. when you do it again, it's not going to have this same feel that it's supposed I, to have. I, I disagree. I think the second you brought uh, AJ over to SmackDown, it is Raw? it. Uh, I'm sorry, to Raw, it is for a title. You don't have AJ on your show and he's not going for the title. It's as simple as that. It's you put tricky, him in money in a bank. But it's tricky mm. though. You can't. It's bigger than that. Like it's, we, we've we set up that all these shows are mega must-see shows. If you, you can't do like the passable right. where everyone competing against a champion post WrestleMania is of a Lacey Evans caliber mm-hmm. where it's like, oh yeah, but they're just getting a shot and you go, well, no one's going to win. I don't believe anyone is changing anything. Mm-hmm. You got to do some high profile matches. Yeah. Like that's just the way that yeah. It's yeah. structured now. Yeah. Damn. Especially- it's going against Game of Thrones. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go. The Miz versus Shane McMahon in a steel cage. Scott, what's your thoughts? You do, do you, are you excited for this match and ready to see Shane try to kill himself again? I mean, it's going to be cool, but if Mrs. Dad isn't going to be there. He can't, he can't even get in the cage. Ever. He can't get in the <laughs> ring. Like, it's such bullshit. Mrs. Dad? Yeah. He can do anything. Fuck you. <laughs> what if Mrs. Dad climbs the cage? Oh, my God. Oh. Then. There's that'll make be this match child work. that'll be influenced just like Mick Foley was when he saw Jimmy Superfly Snooker jump off the cage. Uh, I, I, I'm excited for this. It's been a great feud. They, they've been doing cool stuff. I think it's, it's great that Miz is keeping this momentum. I thought it was cool what he's been doing with Roman Reigns, the back and forth, mm-hmm. that establishing like, I don't want to talk to that old Miz. I want this was, new Miz. That was the best Reigns we've seen in a while, too, on the mic. That mm-hmm. segment was really good. So Miz keeping this going, and Shane's the perfect guy to do it. And I think this is where we see Miz get the victory and uh, really establishing this face Miz that this is, could be the guy that we see, you know, SummerSlam or something like that going for the title. I think that I agree that this will be a Miz victory because it'll. we're going to continue this till at least the, uh, the Saudi Arabia show. I think we're going to – because then it'll be for the best in the World Cup. Wait, are they doing that again? No, no. It'll be just Shane versus Miz for the cup but i think the cup has to have a tournament or else it's like if anything they might revisit the tournament format because it's a great way to just get a bunch of stars on a thing no, I, 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 think I don't the, think they're just gonna put yeah. it on a plane with yeah. them that's what i think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not taking that. but i do think the miz takes this when he needs it because if shane wins then this kills all the momentum for that program this is shane up too and now the Miz is down. So it's like you have to have one one so they can have the rubber match and go from there. I don't know if you get much bigger than a cage. Yeah, though. I think hell in a cell. 
That's a, just a roof on a cage. Yeah, but that that means and that pay per view isn't coming for a while. But yeah. what that I mean, true. But what that does is that now it, the cage doesn't stop people from coming in, i.e., the B team and stuff like that. Wait, a cell stops people from coming in. The cell doesn't. No, people who climbed the cell and jumped in the match. People have done the same thing for a cage, though. Like you're, you're, you're yeah. I'm talking about. No, no. I mean reasoning. the cage. I'm sorry. The ca- the cell is keeping people out. The cage they climb up in. That's what I'm saying. Well, people have also gotten in a cell yeah. as well. This is true, but I'm just I'm looking at it from a hopeful standpoint. I just I don't also I I don't think I've ever seen matches escalate where they go in a cage right. and they go cage wasn't enough. Put a right. roof on it. Right. Hell in a cell. <laughs> Put like, two people in the elimination chamber by themselves. Right. <laughs> Jake, what's your thoughts? Um, yeah, Miz wins. This is I think this is the end of this feud. I think this is Miz finally getting his come up and then we're gonna see him move on to greener pastures. Or maybe he'll just have to face whoever um Shane's new lackey is as a baby face, whoever that ends up. What about being. Miz and Elias coming as a new feud after this? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Means. He's his guy, or he has to like fight. Miz both. could actually make fun of Elias and In get it way. correct. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh the WWE title, this one scares the hell out of me. Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owen. I'll go first. Uh just one of them? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> I I really believe I'm hoping that Kofi keeps it. But it looks like they're going to put it on Kevin Owen and they're going to either use Sami Zayn or Xavier Woods turning. Are you French Canadian? Why do you keep saying Kevin Owen? I know that's why I was. That's why I, I don't want to say Owens. Owen. I don't like to say Owens. Why? Because I don't know. Just want to say Kevin Owen. That's, that's, not, that's his not his name. name. Kevin Owen. Jay Wash. <laughs> you just left out a whole whole bunch of parts. Of that's there. right. <laughs> that's what a French Canadian do. <laughs> uh, I think Kevin Owens goes over and I think it's from help from either Sami Zayn or with Xavier Woods, it looks like they're setting up the breakup for them. I I don't see it. I don't want I don't want Kofi to lose this. I don't. I don't think they they shatter everything post mania. I don't think they go. Let's break up the new day. Let's take the title off him. Let's do all of it. Especially not with Big E not being there. But like, here's and remember I brought we brought this up a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about how when they did Kofi did the two uh, when they first did the, the wild card when Kofi did the title match versus AJ and then versus Daniel Bryan so they can say he defended the title twice. Yeah. And now if he loses it, oh, it was his third title of defense. He couldn't keep it out there. It's their way of having some type of excuse. That's the way I feel they'll, they'll do this. I don't. I think you're looking into it too much of like the, having an excuse for something like that when it's the, the cash cow. It works right. like Kofi. Like it all works. And plus them going, no, don't nexus this. Like it's fine. Don't break this apart. Like we yeah. have more momentum now than we've ever done. Like we got to this point. Why would you immediately cut it off at the knees? Yeah. Fair enough. Dale? Yeah, I think The Miz will win. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, I Thanks didn't realize I didn't cut. I am so sorry. One. I am so sorry, dude. That is my <laughs> my brain blanked on that. I'm sorry. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So do mm-hmm. both. Give me The Miz and give me. The- <laughs> <laughs> I think Miz, and I think that we still have another match. I, I think they are going to try and do something for uh, Saudi Arabia. I don't know if it's for the cup, but I do, I do think they're that's the perfect spot to finish it out and then be done with it. Um, also Kofi has to keep it. I feel, and you mentioned Daniel Bryan. It made, it made me feel like, isn't it kind of weird that Daniel Bryan went from WrestleMania to the pre-show? I thought that was seems super, super weird. I know it's a different situation, but I just am really surprised that they would put the Usos and, and Daniel Bryan on that pre-show. It's, they don't have enough time. (laughs) Oh, that's also, it's also a great for guys to throw on your pre-show to get people to buy the network that haven't gotten it and get excited about the pay-per-view, the casual. Those are four guys that are going to put on a hell of a match for mm-hmm. those tag titles. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jake, what's your thoughts on this uh, Kevin Owens versus um, Kofi Kingston? Yeah, I think Kofi will win. That's what uh, will happen. What I want to happen is I want uh, KO to win with the help of Sami Zayn, and I also want Zayn to win that Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, cash it in and have KO and Zayn as your two ch- champs being just the worst, most hateable humans running the the divisions on both shows. But then you have so good. Oh, so you want Sammy to cash it in because he's a raw guy. Yeah, but there's still this wild card rule. Yeah, but that's I think that's still like I'm gonna if all right. Let's pretend that this all fucking matters and that no, these no, are no, actual I get, rules. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Then then the wild card rule means that 
two people can come over to Smart and Smackdown doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to cash in well, on a different well, company. Well, right? here's the thing. The Usos are the Raw, are raw guys yep. going for the SmackDown titles. Yep. So that's what I'm saying. Like, Oh, I didn't even think about that because I don't know who's on what show anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. The Usos are Raw guys. So by all... Still, the, but it, regardless, it doesn't matter whether yeah. this hypothetical you're saying doesn't change my thought that I would love to see Sammy and, Ke- and KO be the two uh, two brand champions just being the most, just awful. Mm-hmm. Just everybody would it, hate them. It would be so fun to hate them and watching them get maybe get dethroned on the same night in like two months would be very fun, you know? I, I think it'd be f- more fun to have them celebrate Kevin Owens winning and then Sammy hit him over the head with it or something. If, uh, if we're going with it, they can do whatever and he, he takes it. That would also be, I would enjoy that very much as well. Mm-hmm. That Just would put make, those guys on my TV and give one of them a shot. That would I make him, him, that would make his heel, the, he's already over as a heel. If he did that to Kevin Owens, the thing like is, he wins. <laughs> but the thing is that if he beats Kevin Owens, who just beat Kofi, by attacking Kevin Owens, Sammy's a, a, fa- a baby face now. No, he's not. I, I kind of think so. I think that that audience pops, goes crazy, and cheers him if he wins. If that's what happens, then I think it. I, I it's a weird gray area, but I feel like people are going to hate KO if he beats Kofi. They are going to hate yes. him. And any harm that comes to him immediately afterwards, we will be very happy about. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, again, I know it's a weird I still, gray see, area, I still don't see Kofi losing though. I just ditto, don't, I don't ditto. know why they would they would yeah, ruin all. Not going to happen. Too many too many t-shirts to sell. Just, just I think don't. I think Kofi wins and we it's setting up Kofi trying to do too many things on his own yeah. without the backup of New Day, which will eventually Be cost the him he the loses. title. Right. Um and they're like we had your back. We did this and it's like I'm sorry I I pushed you guys aside, but maintaining friendships and the team and then, and then you have the good storyline uh, if he does challenge again later uh, for a title the second time, the story of like, you couldn't do it on your own. If you, you know what I mean? Like you tried to do it on your own and you failed. Like mm-hmm. and you literally throw any heel those lines and you've immediately got great heat. You know, that's right. That's a good story to tell. And flip the New Day back heel? No, 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 no. I'm no. saying. Oh, okay. I'm saying if if he loses this because he's trying to do much on his own. Okay, I got you. I got when you. he tries again, you throw Daniel Bryan or KO or yeah, Sammy, saying, anybody against him. You weren't them. able to do it on yeah. your own. You need all your buddies. Exactly. Makes sense. Uh, the universe, the universal, excuse me, United States title, Rey Mysterio versus the U.S. champ Samoa like, I like, Joe. I feel like we really buried the lead with this. We should have started with some of these undercards. <laughs> I mean, it's just the way this this um, thing is written on the ground. Yeah, no, this is just a this is more fodder to make Joe look badass. I think I th- I think this might be the Mania match that didn't happen. That's what this might be. This oh, might I think be, this will be like it'll be the exact it'll be, whatever they had planned at Mania. I think it's mm-hmm. gonna happen now. Dale. I'm so glad they brought up Dominic looking like Joe because it was it was undeniable in that particular shot from the side of those two. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, good grief. How is he not Joe's kid? It's weird because I actually uh, think he looks a little bit like Jack Swagger. I could see that a little bit in the face. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. first time I saw him, I was like, is this Jack Swagger's like brother or some shit like that? And then like, oh, it's Dominic. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um. I think you kind of need Ray to win it, though. I, I don't. I don't know. Unless Ray's just on one of these put everybody over kind of runs. I, I feel like to get squashed at Mania and then lose the the follow up match. I don't. I don't know. It doesn't do a lot of good for Ray. Scott. Uh, Ray loses because of Dominic. I was gonna say the same. Give me some. Yeah, that some. makes sense. Uh, Dominic, uh, like uh, Ray's getting choked out, and Dominic comes in and you know it hits Joe because Joe Joe's just talking shit the whole time. Something like that. Like mm. Dominic can't handle it being on the outside and seeing his dad getting which whooped. Which, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, was our prediction in for Mania. That's what I thought. We all thought Dominic was going to get involved in Mania because it seems to make sense. They kept they were mentioning oh. he's going to be there at ringside. He's going to be there at ringside. And why would you say that 500 times? Uh, and then, of course, it didn't happen anyway. So yeah, again, I think this is, whatever the plan was at Mania, we're getting here. Mm-hmm. I want to see Dominic turn on his father, and the fact that you Ray cold. mentioned. Ooh. How would you say it's Scott? cold and yes, it's very cold. <laughs> He's like Joe is my dad. <laughs> no, but the fact He's definitely like, awake now. Well, what he did, because when like last week, when Ray made sure to mention to Cesaro, he's been training and getting ready to be in the ring. There was a reason for him saying that. Like we like you've known, you know, if you've heard behind the, you know, saying yeah, he's the, the story. David Flair of the Mysterio. Yes. But for him to bring that up, I think it was a reason. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> the David Flair of the Mysterio. Yeah. I do. Th- I think though that 
Dominic somehow gets involved with this. I think Joe does. I think Joe retains, and somehow Ray is mad at Dominic, and Dominic just don't give a shit no more and still off his daddy mm. and do something like that. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, do we have any predictions for the cruiserweight title? Like, you want to do that one? Stays with Tony yeah. Knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everybody's just like it's Tony Knees. Let's just keep it there. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really like. I, I'm happy that the, the cruiserweights have a title, but it just it seems like an afterthought so much. No, it's just a different brand. I mean, I, I you say it seems like an afterthought. I am so glad that these matches happen on the pay per views. Even no, if I'm glad they happen. I'm glad they happen, but I feel like they're not. They don't have a big enough roster yeah. to change it around. Okay, right? like yeah. all over the not place. Too, not too often. So that's that's what it's it this follows a pattern until they break it and right. they do some hot shot and back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, it's it's so easy to follow. Right. That's why, that's why I say, and it seems like they're kind of building like Mike, Mike Canellis is still in the, the title picture. He's yep. just been losing a lot lately. So I, I don't know if they view him as a bigger star or anything. I don't, I don't know who they are. I, th- I think the shows have been really enjoyable lately. I, I've really liked two Oh five. The, the four way this week was, Superb. No. Uh, I also, th- you know, it, it's worth noting that that title very rarely, if I think ever, has changed hands on the actual show. Maybe in the first couple months of it existing, but like this is a title that if you don't watch Two Five Live, you will remember who won it at the last pay per view mm-hmm. and know who the champion is going in. Buddy so, Murphy yeah. won it at the, the Australian. Australia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying, and is then that, finally lost it at yeah. WrestleMania. I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It hasn't won on like the weekly 205 lives. Like right. that title hasn't changed hands there. So right, right, right. this is a good match for the casual uh, viewers who still like these guys and want to see them wrestle, but don't necessarily want to tune in for the whole program every week. Mm-hmm. Do you guys like Davari? I like him a lot. I haven't seen that much of him. I think he's fine, but I'm not uh, captivated by him. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've always, you know, been a fan of Davari. So both of the bro- the Davari brothers. So. To see Arya in this position to be dope. Uh, let's can we go to Raw? Yeah, but they ain't wild cards. Land. Oh, the wild cards! They repeat, they repeat all the time because they're wild. <sighs> this is what this is what I was talking about a little bit ago. This is uh, so I, I'm trying to keep the stats here. Uh, at what point I'll <laughs> just not give a shit anymore and not keep track of this will be like uh, the person at TNA who is keeping track of win loss records. Um, <laughs> so the wild card of Roman and Elias two weeks in a row, uh, on raw. And then, uh, we have three repeats on SmackDown of the Miz and the Usos. Usos. Yeah. Miz. But we got a new oh, yeah. wild card on raw. Yep. In an Apollo Crews and take a, and a guy who hasn't even had a match on the show he's been designated to. <laughs> the guy who didn't even know what show he was on is a wild card. You could have just not said it was a wild card and nobody would have fucking known. <laughs> we wouldn't have known the difference. <laughs> Wait, which one which one was it? Apollo who Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he mm, he was yeah, over there and so was Charlotte one. Flair. A, a wild huh. card in a contract signing. Yeah. yeah, how is that considered? I don't get how is she considered a wild card for that. Like It was a very tame card. Yeah. <laughs> And then on on SmackDown, then we also had Ricochet for you know the hot second for going and <laughs> it was so weird that he didn't stay on the ladder. <laughs> I mean, when have you ever not stayed on the ladder for the photo op? He took it down, ran away. With, it was so <laughs> yeah, silly to like, me. And thought about it at the entryway when he had the briefcase. Like, what do I do with this next? He was, no, he was this. thinking, oh shit, I should have stayed up there. That's what he was thinking. <laughs> I could tell this. Yeah, it seemed even. like did, did he needed to be reminded that that's not. He didn't actually win it right there. <laughs> yeah. Like it was it was such a weird moment of like jubilation for him. It's like no uh, bro. It's like no fun. no no, you're not the Nikki Cross character. You're Ricochet. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you hear oh, that? Oh, by the way, what What was with the, Oh my god, the Ricochet bit drives me insane. I can't believe they added that. I know it happened like 3 weeks ago, but it just drives like me bonkers ago, yeah. every time. Yeah, we just never talked okay. about it yet. Yeah, well, how is Vince supposed so to know which silly. guy's coming out unless the sound effect that is his name do you remember the beginning of Bam Bam Bigelow's? It was just some. It was just bamming. It was so much bamming. But that was enjoyable. I'd rather Ricochet make the sound. Diesel, <laughs> like like the New Day <laughs> saying their stuff beforehand. Diesel had like the diesel truck sound. Like yeah. everybody just has to have the name. Yeah, you, like the, you don't like yeah. the Ricochet Rabbit. Ping. Smoking. Guns. I want Ricochet. <laughs> ricochet to make Rabbit the noise. is the problem. The, the Ricochet Rabbit is the bit that drives me insane. I always think of that dumb cartoon because that's what it is. It's Ricochet Rabbit. It's, it's not a bullet Ricochet. It's Ricochet yeah. fucking Rabbit. <laughs> but I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Speaking on Raw, we got our. It's new like an Ram- old. Um, is he related to an old Hanna Barbera character? Yes, he's he not, is. is he related to Ramblin? 
<laughs> we'll get to that. We'll He's get to that. Again. We'll get to that. No. But let's talk about this Mojo Raleigh debut that was oh, yeah. so long and anticipated and just a new look and yeah. And underwhelming. And very fucking underwhelming. What was the I, new look? I, not Explain not it. not a knock on him and what he did. He did all right with what the circumstances were all around it. Campfire doesn't like it. So a what a, a blue and black singlet? I thought it was and a purple makeup on his face. Yeah, like he. I he think makeup? it's supposed to be a broken mirror. They were saying on yeah, one half of his they face. They were saying on the commentary. But it looks mm-hmm. like Iron Man two. He's sick. He's being poisoned, and he's oh, got they, like they, cyber veins. They didn't get Jeff Hardy to draw it out for him. No, that he no. would have driven like three faces on his face. Um, <laughs> well, it's a mirror. It's a mirror of each of your th- your th- third eyes. So I think I, what I think they'll work on that though. I mean, the makeup always evolves because they don't they don't know. Sure, and like I said, no fault of him. Like he, I feel he did everything was that he was supposed to do in that segment, but it was so oddly structured. Fighting a guy who was on SmackDown to come to Raw on a wild card and gets Apollo gets hurt right away off his own maneuver, not anything Raleigh Mojo did. And Mojo hangs back. The ref and Apollo talk, and they get the okay, and then. Mojo doesn't really exploit the injury and he still gets a win and he's excited, but like, what was this? Wait, also, why is he wearing Roman Reigns' emblem on his chest? That's what it looks like. He's just lying around. (laughs) Yeah, it makes... uh, Sorry, sorry, I was going to say, he he does go for the injury a little bit. I mean, it it isn't a long enough match for him to get much action on that knee, but he does like shoulder block it or something right away once it's okay but um yeah i thought that that material of that suit was super weird too i think it didn't help him out he looks like either a, he looks like i'm a sure he's been, if he's been <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it did look like a weird like an anime i hadn't seen thing once you were to hear mojo come out to the <laughs> <laughs> no he's sense. gonna come out to the sound that mojo jojo Shh. made from the old uh, power puff girl. girls cartoon <laughs> oh, jo, 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 jo. There's like an 11 year old listening to this going, acting like you with the Hanna Barbera stuff. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. You're old. <laughs> let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about what Jake brought up. Let's talk Rambling Rabbit. Speaking of, and the Firefly he, Fun House. He has a band aid on his eyeball. Because <laughs> apparently that's all that happened. He just had his eyeball poked out by a buzzer. He and was we, there. They didn't acknowledge. They just like, he was there. He's alive. And we got the look at Bray Wyatt's secret and his how he deals with his anger. What do you think about the mask and the look, Jake? Uh, f- I, from the back, he looked like uh, DeVito as the Penguin in Batman Returns. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. Uh, then he turned around. The mask is cool. It it it, it gives me, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Jesus Christ, like the Spawn uh, clown character. The Violator. Violator, thank you. It gives me Violator feels, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, it's interesting. It's weird. I mean, I feel like he's probably not going to wrestle in it, so I don't know. It's. I think it's going to really? be like something he takes. You think he's going to wrestle in I that think that's. Yeah, I think I that's know. his, but I think that's his version, like how Finn Balor has the demon. I think that's his demon. He's almost worn this more than Finn Balor's been the demon in WWE. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, um, but no, it's it was really cool. I, I mean, it's a cool look. I think that the uh, the reveal of it. I feel like WWE is always really bad whenever they're trying to reveal something dark and creepy. They're always kind of like a little bit too cheesy about it. Um, like it goes on a little on bit a too long. On a kids' TV show, that's <laughs> on weird. It's television program. Well, no. Do the you want to see my secret again? That well, was this awesome. Seems cheesy. No, that was fucking awesome. The build up to it was great, <laughs> and the the monologue leading up to it was awesome. Mm-hmm. But then the actual reveal of it took it was like took too long, and it was weird. And I do enjoy that he's adopted a new song. We're gonna do Twinkle Twinkle now instead of he's yeah. got the whole world in his hands. Yeah. So it's evolving. Uh, it's cool. Ulti- ultimately, I'm excited. I'm, I, I look forward to seeing it in the ring though more than uh, in these vignettes. Dan, yeah, what was your thoughts on that? I really dug it. I thought it was. I I didn't know where we were going right. anyway, right? right? Obviously, but it it just this all kind of made sense, and I I like the idea. The mask did look super cool. Like yeah. I hope that he, you know, they looked like they spent some money. They didn't cheese out. It looked cane cane worthy of you know like the uh, DX era maybe. Um, but it just really f- felt like I don't know. It it was like a, a creepy Kizarni mix. There was there was something. I was definitely intrigued, I guess. I bet Kane was sitting back and going, you couldn't have done this for me like five years ago and painted that red with this piece of shit Fruit Loop that I've been wearing on my face? A Fruit Loop. 
<laughs> it did get worse more recent, didn't it? It sure did. It that did not get updated. When they attached just, the wig to it. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. But I, yeah. I, I've been, I've been, I, I realized what it was about these segments where I'm like, sometimes I'm like, eh, just not that it doesn't do anything for me is because they're not giving what we want to Bray. The first one I really liked because we got the stuff about the gloves and his former self with the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And then this one was, I have a secret. Do you want to see it? And the other ones were just filler. I don't want to see him doing filler. I want there to always be a point of whatever it is that he's hiding or suppressing or revealing. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to show it to me every time, but having that be there, that's why I thought this one was great. I really dug this one through and through. I loved it. I I like I agree with you. I like the fact that we showed it, but I'm hoping, like I've said earlier, this is his version of Finn Balor's demon. Like I want him to come out wrestling in the uh in the cardigans, in in the sweaters and the khakis and everything, and maybe have him lose. Mm -hmm. You know, like when he keeps losing, that's when the frustration builds up, and that's when the the Joker pants and the tails and everything mm -hmm. comes out. Because he's so frustrated of his lo his losses. It'd be super funny if he actually wrestled as two different characters and just had right. like the hurt one and the heel one or whatever. And it's like he has the the more my Pee Wee outfit on or whatever. Um, and then this scary version, and you just don't know who you're gonna get. But you know, in a more interesting way than the demon might show up. It's like you get a whole different character, not just face paint. He well, could, and of he course, be he'll tag be a different team character. champions. I think he'll definitely be a different character. <laughs> I think he'll definitely be a different character because I think that's the one thing I hate about Finn Balor's demon because it's supposed to be he gets stronger and he's different, but he has the exact same move set. Everything's the same except for that's he's not got true. He can get uh, paint on you. <laughs> do you think this character, like this, the masked version of Bray, has a has its own name? Do you think? No, I think no. he's Bray Wyatt. I think he's, he's still Bray Wyatt both times. Because I'm saying you're thinking, of, oh, wrestle is two I characters, see it be something, yeah. I don't know. Uh, fun fact: the mask was actually uh, created by horror legend Tom Savini. Yeah, <gasps> shut the front door. He tweeted it. It's about closed me. already. I, everybody in uh, Mongolia knows it. because <laughs> it's been on Jay's Mongolia stream. The front door for the whole time. <laughs> That's awesome that Tom Savini made that. Yeah. How did he acquire it? Um, is it just a prototype of something? How, wait, what? How did he acquire it? How, well, like, does uh, Tom Savini make it for no, WWE? Because no, uh, I thought he was retired. Well, the story was. Um, I, I wish I could remember the artist's name, but Bray reached out to a friend of his who is a popular artist mm -hmm. um, and had him. Jeff Hardy. Uh, <laughs> Parox Y. Jen. Uh, he had him draft up all of these different drawings of not just the mask and all of that stuff, but the drawings of the funhouse and like all these other things. Apparently, this is all something that was uh, the, the, the artist uh, wrote like a Facebook post all about this. And I, I'm, I'm a bad journalist because I can't remember his name, but uh, and, Jeff Hardy. and he wrote all of this shit. Uh, drew all this stuff out and uh, kind of created this like character Bible for Bray, who then brought this to Vince wow. and laid laid all this guy's original artwork on Vince's desk. And Vince was just like, sure, go for it. Absolutely. And just ate it. And then they brought everybody in. And so I'm, I'm pretty it. sure he ate it like a plus, like give it. Oh. An a. Yeah. Um, Vince, don't eat the character Bible. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder he said it was OK. He was hungry. And, and, then, he was like, and then he was like, he's going to puke. And he just puked it all up. Um. Uh, so anyways, and then I think uh, they reached out to Tom Savini after the fact for that because that's yeah, rad because yeah. it was like that. this because I think it was like the artist was like, oh, this is the guy who should do this. And so it was all one of those word of mouth things. And, mm -hmm. and he's a big fan. And there's connections and all that kind of stuff. So, and I, I'm really happy to learn that this was all from Bray's mind because I, I was curious about that, especially when right. we found out that they, they brought in Taker and Triple yeah. H to help with the, the production. <laughs> oh my god if triple h and and taker are just takers must take his puppets. mercy to buzzard yeah he's like, hey man oh, box hurts <laughs> well no he's not doing the voice because there he's no, just, I'm just, just saying takers yeah. takers just hand of mercy to buzzard going hey uh, man but anyways uh fun fact yeah that's when nice. do you think he debuts uh money in the bank mm, i go the next <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah. yeah i go the next yeah i think the monday after yeah monday seems fun. i want at least two more weeks of it I feel like now that we've seen it, what are we going to see on I, the fun house? That's different. I think we'll keep getting fun houses. That's the thing. They may not be mm -hmm. every week, but I don't think the fun house is going away. They made a song and a graphic that are not. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I don't think he'll be doing a lot of interview yeah. segments. It'll always be that. And maybe we see other people yeah. show up on that that show that makes sense because yeah. the only fucking reason this show is still on after johnny leaving is because i made that fucking theme song <laughs> and the graphics i was like well fuck, i can't i gotta do it gotta and do i gotta it take her triple h here's puppeteers so uh, you think so, so you think it's controlling the pod dog <laughs> so i think like i said i think maybe not this monday the following monday because i think this monday we'll get the the firefly fun house that says 
will debut next week or some shit like that. Oh, I hope not. I hope it's a surprise. I hope they don't do I can't stand it when they announce. So you just rather just let they, them pop up. Letting the audience that. know when people yeah. sh- well, show they, up, that's the worst. They likely will do that oh. because they want people to tune in. Oh, I'm so oh, excited right now. The podcast, knock it over. Podcast's going to knock over Jay's phone. There's no <sighs> way this isn't happening. Oh, how did he avoid that? <laughs> well, the one time he's graceful. He might just do it on his own. He might just that shitty thing that cats do where they just knock it over for the hell of it. Well, speaking of knocking things over for the hell of it, false cat anywhere. That, um, that raw match that between... Was, so fun. Sami Zayn and Braun Strowman, where they just went. Oh, that that just reminds me of the like Attitude Era brawls that Austin would have with everybody. And damn, did they have fun through the concourse? Uh, him throwing him up against that concrete pillar. Yes. Like, every now and then, you see uh, the uh, a wrestler taking the very typical like stunt bump up against something. Right. And it seems like okay, they did a good job. It's always. It's helpful when what they're hitting is loud. Like when he threw him into the garage door and it made that sound, loud sound. Yeah. Yeah. That's always good to help sell it. But this is just a concrete pillar. There's nothing mm-hmm. there. He was bouncing off of these with a reckless abandon for his own life. I was very worried for Sammy's health in these moments. I loved Baron and Drew getting involved. They yeah. Them getting knocked out. Them coming back in. Yeah. Like this, this just had so many fun elements to it where it's like, oh, well, Braun's not going to lose. Of course not. And... Then he started does. to believe it, and then he does, and it was really exciting TV. And, and it went on for event. a while. It made Braun look great because he kept overcoming and overcoming until eventually mm-hmm. it was just too much. You know, it was one of the best parts for me when, when they were backstage, and at one point where, where they were at like the little catering table where you saw the coolers, you see all yeah. the agents and producers over there. <laughs> oh, Video Village. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they were supposed to fuck up Video Village. <laughs> they, they fuck, okay, yeah, they like, fuck. Hey, hey, not over here. <laughs> yeah, we're we're off you, limits. Did we're you see limits. when they knocked one of the lights down? They was like, oh shit. Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when they're going back to get ready to head back to the room, they go into Gorilla and the camera's like, you don't fucking go. <laughs> you know, not for nothing. I actually that would that took so long that I was curious to whether or not that was a pre-tape, the backstage stuff. No, nah, I was too. Yeah, it, I, I had considered that, too. But it, it also reversed where Sammy entered first. I'm sorry. Yeah, Sammy entered first and Braun was chasing him, and then we saw Sammy get thrown by Braun into the arena, and it seemed like one of those things was like, all right, yeah, they might have just not showed Gorilla, and so they yeah, they didn't show Gorilla. If they're not doing two takes of uh, right. Zack Ryder fucking up his own name and stuff, <laughs> like they're not doing. <laughs> I do, I do like the idea of in Gorilla, there's like the people that are on the side of the street for a marathon that like they give them a little cups of water mm-hmm. they take a quick sip and they go, all right, you ready to get back out there? Yeah, let's yeah. get back out there. And then he throws them into the... And that's Vince. You can do it. <laughs> I would have loved if the camera would have almost went to Gorilla and you see Vince, get the fuck from back. <laughs> Vince, we're live. We're live, Vince. Was this was like a pay-per-view worthy match, I thought. It, was, it was so much fun. Or like a, 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 a Raw from days of, of, of yore. But it just it felt so fun and so great. And yeah, I, I actually wanted to watch like certain parts of it again. But I forgot. Dude, to see them, the way they set it up and then how you thought that Braun would Braun and not Braun, excuse me, uh, Baron Corbin and Drew McIntyre were just so happy to help Sami Zayn get the victory to get the to get Braun out of it and then throw him so fun right just, back to Braun. Like that was so great. Because Sami Zayn's face was like, the fuck, wait, wait, wait a minute. I did also notice. Um, th- there was some very real um, eye burning happening from Renee Young when Braun came up. Oh yeah, because he threw that ch- he threw her chair off of the stage before she was like cleared. And what yeah. did she say? She's just like, "Get away from me!" Or? Yeah. Well, that was th- there was like, something there that was like in character, right? There was a well, typical- I think it's a bit of like, "Hey, right. I didn't know this was coming." Like, sure. Don't don't touch me. Right. But then she- Pullman he- grabbing Bobby Heenan's jacket. Stuff. <laughs> right. yeah yeah but he he threw he like slid the, the rolling chair back down the stairs and she wasn't clear and it like it landed right on on her like earphone cable um and it like tugged down and she kind of took a little like you know i was Moxley, worried help me. yeah but then she looked up at him like you motherfucker and i was yeah. just like i was like is renee about to slap braun Strowman <laughs> hey, on tv i'm right sorry now? <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry renee i didn't mean to have you heard Dale or Scott or even Jake about the fact or how much- even Jake? Because <laughs> I don't know if you follow so much behind about how much backstage heat he literally. Hey, had. hey you two, and even you, motherfucker. Do you know anything that's going? On? I still, you've brought this up before. I still don't buy it every time. You don't buy it. He's on the main event of Raw. Yeah. Wait, what was it? Braun has. They say Braun has a lot of backstage heat because he's been oh, blowing spots. Still, that, thing, that rumor is still floating out there. Yeah, because yeah, the Jake keeps bringing it up. <laughs> Goddamn right, we're gonna keep the rumor alive. <laughs> Jake, Jake, Jake is the one floating it. He creates a rumor and then's like, I'm not sure if you guys have heard about this, but I've been telling people. 
<laughs> yeah, that he has so much heat that he's he's closing out the show. Right. Hey, shit's I bu- mean, if, if it was that bad, they would at least take him off or fine him. Um, all in all, uh, these were uh, two very weird, interesting go home episodes. I feel like they had incredible moments and then some really bad, just like redundant. We don't need this anymore moments. They were very yeah. weird go home shows for on Smackdown this week. But in any case, I'm still excited for Money in the Bank. It's one of my favorite uh, pay-per-views because of those two matches. I mean, those mm-hmm. Money in Bank matches are going to be fun. Uh, you know, no matter who the fuck you put in them, there was a good time. Absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we got the uh, the old NXT and NXT UK from this week. I was excited as all hell to see Matt Riddle beat the ever-loving snot out of Adam Cole. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good match, too. Uh, this was a great match, and I, I'm... A little butt hurt about the continued dissension among the ranks of the Undisputed yeah. Era because I still don't think it's a good idea to split them up. But I think this is they did it in, in a way that made me really enjoy what was happening. I like the way that the, the program went off air with them all walking out and then kind of being kept separated. Um, I think this Boy, is, was it yeah. quiet, though. Yes, that was <laughs> strange well, the, for how quiet it was. And then them speaking so clearly, it's like, oh, well, the audience, did the fans just go. We're done. <laughs> well, I think that they wore themselves out because they were chanting no. They chanted hug it out. And the, the segment went on for so long. The fans like, we're, we don't know what to cheer. We've we've chanted everything. It's, it's just, just weird when you don't hear additional razzing or anything. It just stopped. And right. it, it was such an unusual moment. I'm not blaming yeah. anyone or saying like it was bad TV. It was fascinating TV in that yeah. moment. Yeah. My guess was that, you know, they record so many of these back to back to back. I wonder if by then they were like, OK, well, the next episode's coming. We're probably not even recording anymore. Who knows? We're just <laughs> right. going to go get a snack. The fans were just like, man, fuck this. How many Snack more times? Snack it out. Snack <laughs> it out. <laughs> um, I want to say the uh, uh, Noam Dar and Kenny Williams made such a good tag team on uh, NXT UK. I mm-hmm. really hope that they keep them together or I don't know. They just made sense and, and seemed to communicate really well in the ring. And I, I saw them actually possibly winning for a moment, especially when they're, you know, near a hometown of somebody right. I always get a little excited um that they'll lose. I I know that's how it actually works now, but I just don't I just always get excited. <laughs> yeah, not knowing a bunch but, of those guys, it definitely had that vibe of like, oh, this could definitely be right. a title change. Yeah, and I mean, it, uh, anyways, but it was it was a great match no matter what how it ended. I did enjoy it. Um uh, I think that uh another thing that's happening very weirdly on NXT is that women's division and I think it's struggling right now. The, that yeah. weird segment where it was like, oh, here's Jessamyn Duke and uh, Marina Shafir sparring while what's her face leads. And then like, um, uh, not Kyrie. Uh, crap. Uh, the other one. Uh, yo, <laughs> I thank you. Yo thank Shirai. you. Yo Shirai, like attacks You're going her from to the sensitivity back. training in like five minutes. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> the other one. It was oh, on no. the other side of the phone. Yeah, that, that is fucked yeah. up him saying the other one. You know, they were a <laughs> team. You team. referred to him as even the other yeah, one. Yeah, seriously. You called me the other one. Well, um, well we don't have an HR around this bitch. Um, <laughs> that's the cat. That's the cat. Cat's cat. <laughs> the podcast's HR. Uh, this this was handled very weird. Um, I, I, I like the innovative style of their the reason there is a camera film. Sure, this, that was smart. I like, like we're going to sense. we're going to film our training session. Yeah, mm-hmm. this was like John Favreau Iron Man. Like we have to explain why we're shooting this. <laughs> but that's <laughs> yes. fine. Like it, they're just being cameras on everything all the time is a little odd. I, right. The performance center makes more sense. But I I, I appreciated that. Um, but the brawl was uh odd. It was rough. It was uh, odd because um. The, the 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 character who I'm not familiar with that everybody called the other one. Uh, it was strange that Io Shirai. Io Shirai, Shirai is going to fight three of them with no backup. Sure, yeah, because the backup like, just it's, went. To, it's went. just a losing battle. Yeah. So I don't know the character well, that well to know like, oh, she would do that. Kyrie Sane went through a very similar path though, and then she ended up getting friends to help her out once it became a more obvious problem. I guess uh, if you want to say it that way, but. I, I I think they'll figure out some way. I mean, Shayna has had that title for so, so not continuously, but I mean, the, the right. focus has been on her yeah. for so long now that I, I think they kind of have to, and EO is a, is a pro who's wrestled for a long time. I, I think there's somebody that they could get that title over to and, and feel confident about how the matches would go. Do you think that I'm still surprised Shayna's not, not getting moved soon. That's what I was going to say. Do you think that they're just waiting to figure like if they're going to bring Shayna up? Because if they, you take the title off or yeah, you possibly do the rematch, but then what? Do you keep her down there or do you just say, all right, you're going to go up to the main roster? 
I, I think that everything from here until they move SmackDown to Fox is going to be a lot of tinkering, a lot of seeing what works and what doesn't and where they think major people should fall. I feel um, like they, they, I mean, all that upfront talk today or yesterday for WWE just showed that they don't really, the only thing they're thinking about at HQ is Fox and the move there and, and how to integrate so many different products on Fox, the, the network and, and all its uh, insulary content. I, I honestly think they're just going to keep plugging away till it feels right for Fox and they don't care about anything else right now. It's a very, it's a very trial and error phase at the moment. Yeah. Which for NXT is fine because that's how it should be. The women's division there has ebb and flowed multiple, multiple times. And I always think what you were saying, Jake, like, yeah, this is like, there's a few good ones, but they always seem to find enough to make the takeovers really exciting and fun and uh, it, then it, figure it out. And then they have too many. And it's interesting because it, it, it fe- mm-hmm. also feels like the NXT UK women's division is kind of stacked at the moment. Uh, you almost, right. you yeah, almost, yeah. you almost feel like God. Bring Killer Kelly over here, or bring Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley over here. Although she's injured at the moment, oh, like, doesn't yeah. matter. She's injured. Yeah. She's better than most. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and I, and I could see that happening soon. I think that that's where they're going to start pulling from. It's like, all right, well, let's bring some of these women over because, if at least anything, just for some of the takeovers, you know, like just sure. some of these big matches. But it more, it's and I really want to see a, a, a NXT UK versus NXT America pay per view. I feel like that's that great. I think that was. I think that so would be. Fun. That should be coming up soon, right? I mean, well, we had we had worlds collide. That's what I was about to say. The tease is worlds collide, right? Uck versus us. Uh, Uck versus us. <laughs> yeah, but worlds collide. <laughs> worlds collide was like the guys who don't get enough attention exactly. on camera. It w- I want to see. I want to see the champs versus each other, and maybe titles even on the line, kind of vibe. Well, they presented it control. as NXT alumni versus NXT right current. Well, with worlds of, worlds collide. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but they just kind of shoehorned that in there. I thought, sure, that's they said that, and you, yes, being the the viewer, you can go like, come on, these are just people that aren't being used yet, <laughs> right, right, or they had yeah, shit I, going on during WrestleMania, so they were free to do this show, right. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. I'm not trying to dog worlds collide. I just I want something a little more uh, girthy than that. Yeah, yeah. You actually want what they're presenting, like, oh, okay, if you're really gonna do alumni, give me a uh, Kevin Owens. Or Shinsuke right. versus. I mean, honestly, three fourths of the roster at this point, anybody could be. That's <laughs> true. Right. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how many people started in NXT now. If you look yeah, at everybody, the, on the Raw system is SmackDown. working. You know, I yeah, still yeah. want to see people go back down. Just yeah, in I, I don't think it. I don't think you're. You're only ever going to see that for like the rhinos and you know what I mean like for the people that are yeah. are they're really only even on the main roster to enhance younger guys i don't think we're going to see like oh they're going to send back down fucking sammy zane or somebody who's like a big it's just oh, not, not, not a big player of course not i mean of course you're not i think gonna... tyler breeze why does tyler breeze keep talking about that damn title like there's right. there's guys like that where yeah they i i agree they should be moved and down if they can make a better impact down there yeah, I, I just feel like WWE's not going to invest the money in like. I'm, you but know, how much of an investment they, is it though? Eh, I mean, I, I guess it depends. On, it's like, hey, are you going to also take the pay cut, and are you going to, you move. know, what I mean, like, yeah, are you going to move and do all that? I think that's like, the big thing. Is like, right. we, we have to ask them to move. Yeah, that's it too. Yeah, they I bet you a lot of them. Are, I bet you a lot of them already live in Florida. Though. That's what I was saying. They already don't live in Florida or in Orlando already from having been down there when they were initially. Sign. No, they live in the WWE production trucks when they drive them around yeah. from town. That's to why town. their faces are on the side. The faces on the sides are whoever lives inside. That's of it. my bunk. <laughs> oh I, my god, that would be so awesome. I did think that as a child that when I first saw the the production trucks, like just the big WWF blue trucks. Oh yes, get it, cat. Get the streaming phone. Oh, Jay's a. Uh, Jay's oh. gonna, he's a cat. He's yelling at a cat like the cat gives two fucks that he says no and points at it. He's like. The, like, cat, the cat's gonna be look. The cat's like he says no, and the cat's like I'm gonna smell your finger. Pod dogs and now pod get a dogs, good ass <laughs> sniff on Jay. This is all falling apart in the studio. <laughs> oh, pod dog's about to bite your ass because you scared him. You got up. Now you're, he's all nervous. Like, yeah, sniff your butt you. and see what you're really about. <laughs> um, I mean, I lost that train of thought. I uh, know you, what we're talking about. You thought, you thought kids. You thought the people yeah, I thought in kids. <laughs> they, I thought they kidnapped children. Um, impact. Oh, oh, we we are out. We're out of time. What? <laughs> We're out of time. You're a terrible producer. <laughs> I, mean, I listen. I tried to wrap this up like ten, like twenty minutes ago. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we. This is amazing. This is what you get. This I, is what happens. This is, I tried to knock out the news during the pre-show. Uh, no, I, I respect that, but we we yap too much. Um, all right. So I will you say have this. It. Jake hates Impact Wrestling. I will say this. I watched it this week. Some good, some bad. They need to get. They need to just fix all backstage stuff. 
They need to figure out a way to shoot that shit and make it look like it's not. Some of it's all right. 2000. The Killer Cross one was good. The backstage, like the interview. No, no, I'm talking about like uh, backstage oh, interview. Oh, in front of the TVs? Yeah, in front of the TVs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they can't. They rarely have space. Is that what it is? Yeah. They're just, but it's it's so. It when just they're looks not so in Florida bad. where they have space to do stuff, they right. don't. No, thanks. It looks so bad and it looks, uh, it doesn't look like it's filmed this year. It looks like it was filmed 15 years ago. Like the production quality, but arena stuff is great. I really enjoyed watching RVD wrestle. Um, you know, great person to be in there with to help make him look even better. Um, he's definitely a little bit slower and a little bit sloppier, but he's. I mean, that's he's, time. He's still fucking RVD. He's. I mean, he looks better than Kurt Angle does, right? You know, right. Or has yeah, recently. that's man. Um, and Cody Deaner also got hired back, which is super cool. Yeah, he the, was around a long time ago. Cody and Jake, yeah, the Deaners, cousin Jake. cousin Jake. Um, they were fun. I also they need have, that. I gotta say, as much as I hate, uh, for me the the match of the night actually, as much as I can't stand LAX's gimmick and the way that they're presented, goddamn that match was great. That tag match, I love that with Moose and Alexander. You versus, thought over the main event? Um, oh, well, you actually, I didn't watch the main event in its entirety. I was okay. wrapping it up when you it, came. It in. It was a good match, but yeah. man, that main event was nuts. Man, we I, were, I saw the last of it when I was coming in. We was, were eating tacos. I didn't see it yeah. at all. Uh, Legos got did, busted out. I did see Tommy Dreamers and the the 15 minute long promo in the back before the match where oh uh, yeah he like he had such a grandpa moment where he forgot uh keyboard warrior he he definitely wanted to get to a warrior pun like the movie the warriors he yep. wanted to say come out and play right yeah computer wars but, uh, not keyboard but he, wars. he he thought about it beforehand and then he was like shit i in the moment it just left his brain and i, and I mm-hmm. feel for the man because he had a good thing and he was like i'm not gonna lose this so he just went with he a different it. word and then he found it Found it immediately. I thought that was a great promo. Again, like one of those from the heart. Tommy's great at that. There was a moment towards the end there where I was I was concerned that he didn't know what ethnicity uh, Falaba was because <laughs> he was like, I love that it's men and women standing together. That it's white and black, and then he and Latina, and then he like pointed. I thought he pointed at Scarlet at first when he yeah. said that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. she's Latina. She's Latina? <laughs> oh but, no, yes. Yeah, but then like it was a slow draw to Falaba. Like, and I want to say. Asian? I thought he was going to say Pacific Islander. Y- yeah, yeah. Um, there was a moment of hesitation, but I got a soft spot for Tommy Dreamer. And man, that guy is so good on the mic. He's mm-hmm. the kind of guy who he feels it. Like he, he legit looked like he was crying at one point. Like he, the, the emotions come up very naturally for him in those moments, which which immediately makes me believe it. You know, he did so much for Impact and that team in that promo that I think has been done in a long time to tell the stories of. When Brian Cage was injured, the president of this company went to the hospital right. with him and stayed till 4 a.m. Uh, and that's the kind of company I want to work for. Right. And, and, and incorporating that stuff in there is like, yeah. that's really sweet. That's good. That's really cool to hear that he's proud to be somewhere. Mm-hmm. Even if it's full of shit, I buy it. <laughs> well, here's the thing is that even if it's full of shit, you don't like he he sells it in a way that makes you think it's not full of shit. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. So, Dale, you've been watching Impact. No, no uh-uh. <laughs> as much as you have, Jay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah. I just haven't bothered to God, I, sign up for another it. thing too. I know I've fucking said this before, but holy shit, get somebody in there to help Josh Matthews because he during the matches he's okay as far as like excitement during moves and like moments, but when he's in between matches and he's just doing the business. Make sure you're following us here. Make sure this. And then this person, he's telling backstories. He seems fucking miserable. If you, if somebody just animated, if they cut out the crowd sound, the music, they just isolated his microphone and just animated like a very sad face talking. It would match flawlessly. He sounds so depressed when he's doing commentary that he has no energy. There's no excitement. It's maybe it's, it's the only dead. thing that makes him happy. I don't know. Oh, about that? You know, speaking of no, uh, no energy, that was another thing that I noticed this week in my long series of things I'm realizing that uh, are wrong about Impact right now. That fucking audience. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is Wait this for a Patreon right now? What are you doing? <laughs> this is the same. I didn't want the cat to knock it down. So just fair enough. Um, the fucking crowd. Uh, there was a. I don't know if they're just all like kind of smarks who maybe are like. Since their fans are a little jaded by wrestling, maybe? I think there's a lot of free tickets. Is that what it is? And I think they it's also these tapings where they're seeing a lot and there's not a, oh it's my not God. a big roster. There are moments in that tag match. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, there the was a event. moment. No, 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 no. The, the tag match, the, the SAT. Uh, there's a moment. The SAT I just said. Nope, that's not. That's LAX. the wrong team. LAX. Uh, there was a moment where 
<laughs> they do their it's not quite poetry in motion but it sets up the same yeah. way poetry motion, where one of them gets down and the other one runs and does like a senton yeah where moose catches the dude big guy catches him mid-air um with forward momentum which is a feat of strength like moose give that man credit and then power bombs him onto the other guy before he can quite roll away it was not only like a feat of strength, but it was a brutal bump. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was zero reaction from the crowd. There was absolutely no reaction. Maybe there was like a, ooh. <laughs> like, it's just tough. They, they, have, they don't have the same momentum. They don't have the, the love for the Where characters. are they now? That was still that was Toronto? in... Toronto? Yes. That's still in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And then okay. next week's show, I Philly. believe, is in Philly. So you so, think maybe the Philly crowd will be a little more lively, hopefully? In the beginning. In the beginning, right, of course. And then as the tapings go along with a lot of these, it just tapers right. off. Yeah. Because they've seen everybody and it's, you know, they should, they should try to, you think they should, maybe it would pay to turn the room around halfway through? What? Make them face the wall? <laughs> Rotate the crowd, have them move <laughs> to different positions. But if they're giving, if they're, if they're giving away free tickets, they just want you to be a warm body in there for, yeah, and they want to lo- right. at least look like it's full. I mean, I don't think, I don't think they want to go through the trouble of filling it twice. That's right. It's like double the annoyance. That's fair. Uh, guys, I just got a call from the higher ups. We're gonna have to cut the show now. <laughs> what? We were all called out of you? talking. Yeah, yeah. That snore earlier was actually the secret phone going off too early. Oh, you guys weren't supposed to hear. Oh that. no, Jay swallowed the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, we're gonna have to take the compadre hotline questions next time, or figure out a way to uh, get that out there. But uh, thanks for all the calls. We got a lot of good ones this week, so we will definitely be covering them somehow. But uh, Scotty, before we go fully out, should we do the the Patreon Palskis? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Patreon Palskis. We got a new one this week. Curly Isles Jr. Thank you for jumping on Ow, and supporting thank us. thank you. Ow. As well as our regulars, Aaron Christian, Abshir Jama, AJ0314, Alex Pierce, Andrea Beeler, Brian Collins, Brittany M. Kitchens, Charles Schofield, Christine, Edmund Carley, Edwin A. Santos, Gavin Provost, Gilbert Short, Johan Pena, JP, Mass Lama, Matt Salgado, Matthew Beasley, Michael Beltran, Nick Glancy, One and Only Nuggets, Paisley Darts, Pete Garit, Porsche Anderson, Roy Wirtz, The Scoop Staley, Tim Bemis, Tina Keys, Tom Hader, Wayne Lynch, and Zach Ayafuso. We've got great stuff on there, and there is more to come this week. I guarantee it. You can follow me at The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me on YouTube.com slash Dishing on Movies. Jake? Find me on Twitter at Liquid Jake, on Instagram at Jake Lloyd. Uh, make sure you are following uh, at It's Dragon Wagon on all social media for all things Dragon Wagon Radio. And if you haven't checked out uh, my brand new show uh, with my much, much better half, Alexander Hoy, uh, it's called Me, You, and 30 Other Men, and we are diving into the h- entire history of the Royal Rumble matches, um, live, uh, real-time experience right alongside you. Uh, they are coming out every other week. We pick a random Royal Rumble out of the Jaro Rumbles and watch it in real time. And it is a ton of fun to revisit them myself. Um, so far, our first two weeks, I've gotten plenty of um, people yelling at me for not remembering who certain people were in certain matches. <laughs> uh, because, man, my I, I often say on the show, I am not the historian that a Scott Narver is. Because there are so many things that I am fuzzy about. But it's thoroughly enjoyable to revisit and also to see Alexandra's firsthand experience. I haven't started listening yet, but once I do, I will I will yell at you. Yes, you will. I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, you can find me on social media at Scott Narver and check out YouTube.com slash on your mark show. Killer Cross, the aforementioned, is back. Marky Extreme confronts him because he's been hacking his channel and he kidnapped Skeeter. So uh, there's that. And plus, Marky Extreme has a big business idea. What is that? You'll have to tune in to find out and see what that's all about. So it's free. It's great. That's good. Being the extreme, got to catch it. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington, M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. My YouTube channel, youtube.com slash J A Y Washington 80. Make sure you check out my most recent It trailer reaction up there. It's at like 7,000 something views, as well as the Doom Patrol reviews with myself and Winston A. Marshall. And check out the Mad Titan podcast everywhere you get your podcast listen on. I get you caught up on everything that's happening in the Marvel and DC live action cinematic universes it is barbershop talk for nerds so come jump on in the conversation
Awesome. That's going to wrap it up for everybody. Make sure to tune in next week and keep pursuing your personal interest. <laughs> <laughs> That's entertainment. <laughs>